Right, good afternoon again. Um, the players have taken a break. Um, not sure whether it'll be a proper lunch break, but um, Alison's got this stream running. Um, I'm Chris Clark. I'll be joined by my wife shortly. And I'm sure for all the neutrals out there, everyone was pleased to see Soha complete that jump at hoop 12 to get back into the match at 2-1 down. Um, I didn't feel Rachel had played particularly well, um, certainly nowhere near her best in those first three games and at 5-4 up and two games to nil up, it looked like quite likely to be a, a straight games victory. Uh, but that fantastic clearance, seven yard clearance at uh, hoop 10 from the east boundary, clearing Rachel all the way to the west hand side, landing straight in front of hoop 11. Uh, a fantastic shot uh, and probably the best shot of the match so far and that certainly swung things around and having failed a couple of comparatively easy jumps earlier Soha managed to pull that one off at 12 to take us into game four. So Jenny's just joining me and yes it is now a lunch break so we will keep chatting um, but if you want to go off and get yourself a cup of tea or a sandwich and have your own little break that's all good with us and what were your views so far well I think before we go back to this live semi-final yep. uh, perhaps um, talk us through um, how you felt the other semi-final went Jenny well it's interesting Jamie was quite dominant um, she failed a few hoops and failed to take position a couple of times, but also played some absolutely beautiful shots. And yeah, I, I think she was just dominant throughout that semi-final, really. Yeah, I sort of look at it slightly more from Maram's perspective. I felt Maram hit her seven yarders less than 50% of the time, uh, failed some two foot hoops, missed a three yard hoop completely, and really produced no level of performance that was likely to actually test Jamie. Now, having said that, game one, I think I only got two errors out of Jamie and it was a very strong performance. But two and three, I thought, um, tailed off a bit. Yeah, it was short on a few, often short approaching the hoop from the wrong side, so it got to a position where it wasn't runnable, which is an unfortunate miss. Um, yeah, and bounced out of a few hoops, a few of the hoops are a bit floppy as well, which I don't think helped. Yeah, it's day seven now of this event, and the hoops are still in the day one hoop holes. So they're not as firm, and balls that would normally be bouncing three or four feet away are just sort of bouncing a few inches away, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's unfortunate. Um, I do like it when you can get a solid ping if you fail the hoop. Um, oh, when we arrived, I saw them painting the marks again so I thought maybe they'd moved the hoops and were remarking where those offside lines are but I think they just mowed the lawns and were, yeah. were remarking it. It is disappointing. I know the regulations that says the hoops when resources and conditions allow will be moved but I would like to have seen them moved yesterday and I 100% thought they'd be moved today if at, not yesterday. At least two lawns for today's yeah. semi-finals that would, that would be a minimum really. Yeah it was only two to move. Um, be gutted if they don't do it for tomorrow. But again, going back to Jamie V. Maram, I found Maram often did what I would say was enough to win a hoop. And she'd have a three or four foot hoop. And then she'd end up just stopping Jamie's ball away, giving Jamie an extra shot to come back. Yeah. And Jamie might hit something. And she was having to win the hoop three times in, in order to win it. And at this level, you, you can't keep giving your opponent extra 10 yarders to get back into a hoop. Yeah, you actually have to run your hoop when you yeah. have a chance. Um, so, like, one thing I was thinking of while we were watching back there was to say to the players at home, uh, particularly the ladies, look, can you take position at your hoop? And I think most people will nod their head and they'll say, yeah, I can take position at the hoop. Yep. Can you clear two to three yarders in the middle? I think lots of them will go, yeah, I can clear two to three yards in the middle. Yeah. And can you run two to three foot hoops fairly regularly? I think lots of them will nod their head again. Yep. So 
if you fancy that, just think about trying to get a tiny, tiny bit better and then come and play in this next event in four years' time. Yeah, I mean, the standard of play here does show that this tournament is open for newbies coming along. Um, yeah, you know, one of the better players here was, was actually Alison Moore when I had a couple of games with her. Pits the ball very cleanly, can play these sort of stun shots. And then there will be people at home saying, but look, these players hit the ball way harder than I can. But Virginia Arni, Virginia Arni cannot hit the ball hard and has played a series of fantastic positional shots to yeah. get to the quarterfinals. So, you know, come and give it a go. Just try and get that little bit better at your home club in the next two years and then, you know, four years time, we've got another World Championship coming up and you can be part of it. Well, look at Liz Drury. This is maybe her fourth tournament. Handicap six at the start of June. Yeah. Handicap three now. And going on two, I believe. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean, again, she hits the ball very smoothly and cleanly. Runs her hoops nicely. She's, she, um, Lynn Piercy has come along very well through the qualifier, both of them. Yeah, and obviously performed extremely well in the Women's Open, Lynn, as well. Yes. The only player to really be particularly competitive against yourself. Yes, she was strong. Um, um, yeah, and I've, so I didn't get to play Diana Wilson, who's been very, very competitive here. Um, and did very well in the Women's Open as well. So, lots of opportunity out there. Um, it's been a good tournament. Um, good to see the Spaniards putting you know, multiple ladies forward. Yes. Um, lots more tried to get through in the qualifier. Yeah, big Spanish contingent and probably about eight players in the qualifier, maybe more than that. And I would expect them to continue to get stronger. Um, great performance from the English ladies. Nine out of the 11 made it to the knockout. That's just a, a, a real um, boost to their confidence. I think we should probably highlight um, the coaching um, led by Rachel G and Ian Burridge that yeah. they've done for a couple of years now with the ladies. Um, many thanks to them for, for doing that. Um, and I think that, you know, combined with the introduction from the Golf Croquet Tournament Committee of the Women's Open, yeah. is really starting to, to generate the, the opportunities for women that will help them move and become better players. I mean, even for those, for people who don't believe that there should be separate women's events, just a lot of the motivations are more for enjoyable, social, but competitive play. Um, and a lot of the women actually genuinely gain pleasure from playing in events like this. So there's, there's definitely a space in the calendar for these events. Yeah, it's a good social atmosphere always. Um, this is my fifth world women's worlds and they've all been played in a good spirit yeah. with good camaraderie and um, you know chat when people aren't actually on the lawns. Yeah a lot of lifetime friendships here. I think that's probably another thing that is likely contributing to the success of the English women is the support they've given each other and yeah. Rachel's led the way a lot with that. Yeah Rachel and Debbie both um, very keen to change the image of English croquet as being very sort of singular to more of a team environment more camaraderie um, so yeah good work to them and all the ladies um, otherwise I think um, good to see a few Kiwis over yep. and they've done pretty well uh, Jess didn't quite make the knockout but put up a pretty good fight in doing so and I think She's in the final of the plate now. She's in the plate final. She won her match fairly comfortably against her Australian opponent, Gerda Lambic. I think 7-5, seven, 7-3 seven, from memory. OK. Um, but, yeah, she's got a lovely, fluent style, lovely and relaxed. Very nice to see Ashley Cook back playing again. I think she's been playing a bit, but she's having run into her around New Zealand. Yeah. So, lots of positives to take from the event. Um, I suppose we should probably start moving back to this match that we're going to be commentating on after the lunch break. 7-5, seven, 7-4, five, seven, five, seven, from Rachel's perspective. Probably a little bit of a shock to her, losing that third game. Yes, um, just an absolutely stunning clearance from Soha. Put her back in the entire match. Cleared at hoop 10, cleared Rachel's ball to the other end of the lawn and also, more importantly, probably given the state of the match, got herself about four feet in front of hoop 11. 
Yeah, yeah, fantastic, fantastic shot. And then having had two really quite weak jump shots earlier in the match, she's faced with this jump shot where she could have peeled Rachel through hoop 12 and potentially given first play to 13. And she's got good height, gone through, and I hope we can get a little still from the camera of Sohar two feet off the ground <laughs> with a little fist, jump of joy, saying I'm still in this. To be honest, that's something I'd love to see as a photo as well. That was just a beautiful moment in the game. So those, for those clever people at home who maybe got it on live stream, just take a still for us, send it to Jenny or myself, and yeah, we'll be delighted to have that still of so hard jumping in the air having taken the third game yeah it shows how much it really means to her remember of course she's defending champion yes yes but she's still you know there's nothing jaded she just loves it and just, just wanting to play and wanting to do well it's great and she now knows that all egyptian hopes hang on her yeah it's interesting because she hasn't played to her potential during this match you know, she's missed a few shots failed a few hoops but I just think if she can get her tail up and just get some encouragement, which she's done with this lovely piece of play at the end of the game, I think she's just well back in the match now. Yeah. I've always thought of Sohara as quite a fast player, and um, the match against Noha, that second round, last 16, um, that was quite slow. And today's match, Rachel's quite deliberate as well. I don't think Soha's being allowed to find her natural fluency. Yeah, I think she's slowed down quite a bit as well, actually. Um, so maybe that's one aspect that, you know, maybe isn't quite as sharp. Um, but I think the rain's gone away for the day, though, which is in Soha's favour. I, yeah, I can't that. see any sign of dark clouds at all. There's still a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, we're, and we're, the court we're on is in the exposed absolute centre of the venue. It is. But there's not that much breeze, it's not like yesterday. But get, getting back to that jump shot that so much succeeded with, I mean, we were sitting there chatting about it, the key thing we're saying with those jumps, you can take them on, but 100% you must be high enough to be over the ball. And you saw that with one that Rachel played, which I thought she was standing a bit too far over it, given the power in her swing. But I said to you before she struck it, this is going to hit the crossbar. Yeah. And it flicked the top of the crossbar and went even even higher, didn't it? Yeah, that's the trouble. You need power, but you do need to moderate it a bit to not be too high. But again, at least not peeling a ball. If you peel a ball on a turning hoop, that can just change the match. These lawns are quite springy. We've had no difficulty all at all getting height. They're lovely to play jump shots on, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just a matter of controlling that height. Do you think that, that could have contributed to Rachel's jump being a bit too high and that she plays at Nottingham, which is actually, particularly on those relayed lawns, quite difficult to get a ball up in the air? Yeah, the relayed lawns don't have... Um, any level of spring at all really you've got to hit down on it quite hard to get some height and i think it's because they don't have that level of thatch on yet thatch develops over a few years and you don't want a lot of thatch on a lawn but actually having a little bit just gives it that little extra bit of spring yeah i mean it's like creating jump shots at home, at home on carpet because the ground directly under the carpet is so hard it's very virtually impossible to get them to jump well. Yeah, you've got to time it well and hit down on it hard and firm. So what have we got still going on around us? Is there yeah, well, exactly. Well, that's what he's saying. Much here. We've got Perry versus is it Pauline. Looks like Perry, Perry and V Pauline up on lawn nine. So that will be a shield match. It's unlike V Pauline because she was playing yesterday, actually, isn't it? One of the young ah, indeed. Well, maybe they're just having a friendly. Could be, yeah. um, and we've been through a stage where all the lawns were in use all the time, up to eight o'clock every night, and now lots of the people are knocked out. Um, we've got the plate semi-finals going on, so we've got Cheryl Bromley from the USA against Louise, Louise Smith from England, yep. and that's in the third game. That is, yes. Um, um, and over here we've got the third game in the. Field again, is it? Judith Hennicom against Helen Rees, possibly the bowl. I think that's the bowl. Um, and I'm not really sure what's going on on Lawn 3. There's a big Aussie flag here. 
Yeah, it's a, I think it's a wee bit of a shame that we didn't have the semi-finals in all the events today staggered. And I know, particularly with the, you know, yesterday one of the um, quarter-finals went to five, so finished latest, but maybe a 9.30 and during the 12 o'clock start? Yeah, 9.30 and 12 or 12.15. 12 um, I'm going to be managing the over 50s in um, Bunbury later this year, and it's certainly my intention. Again, once again, due to the fact we're going to have televised coverage yeah. to try and have, as you would at Wimbledon, one semi final followed by another semi final, or at least three hours of one yeah. followed by a def defined start time for the other. Yeah, I think provided you're willing to define the start time and you're not sitting there going, this goes to five and then this one goes to five after it, we're here all night. You've got two separate lawns for the matches. You just give one of them a significant head start. And the opportunity for all these spectators at home, all our viewers, to watch both matches. Yeah. So the players are back. Yep. Rachel's going to win the toss in both game four and potentially and if there's a game five yes if there's a game five she'll win it in that as well so a big advantage Thank you. Um, in the 2008 world what we found is if you win the toss 70 or 80 percent of the time people run through one from the 800 games from the 2008 world it was surprising though that it was something like 52 percent of people who won the toss won the, won the game um, so one of the things I didn't mention, I haven't mentioned yet about this game is I think Soha's position taking has been very poor. When she won the World Championship, it was excellent. Yeah. We uh, saw the last game, she missed position with both the first two balls, didn't we? So, position taking at one, position taking at three, and position taking at nine have all been substandard. Yeah. Uh, Rachel's put a nice ball in front of hoop one. It's quite deep, it's probably about eight feet. So, we've got a position and a clearance, do you reckon? I think so, yeah. yeah down there. This is interesting. Normally players would play south of this ball. Apart from me. That's where I put it. <laughs> so yeah, what this does is it encourages blue to clear red rather than having go at the hoop. If she misses with yellow, it should be an effective clearance. Is this coming up short? This is short as well. Yeah, that's not easy. Blue will be taking the hoop on, I think, now, if it gets uh, left there by yellow. Yeah, so the current wisdom tends to be go de deeper with red so you can't be cleared and black gets good position. But here I think she's a bit rewarded by this. She's got the chance to have a clearance, then puts the pressure on Rachel's hoop. Come on, stop. Get out, his swing will get stronger. Absolutely. A fluency player, and she'll be thrilled to bits with that last one. And she knows this is far from over. Especially with that blackboard being short. Yeah. Yeah, this is a shot to stay in the hoop rather than to try and claim a big advantage, isn't it? Yeah. I think it does Jaws. Yeah, it's not that easy to do. Certainly if the hoop's being a bit soggier, it's easier to play. That's missed again. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't think Rachel's been anywhere near a peak performance um, this match. And has almost won 3-0. Yeah, I mean, her shooting yesterday was outstanding. She hit so many shots, she ran so many long hoops, but... Um, She's missed a lot of 7-8 yarders today. 
that said, she has hit a lot of shots and run a lot of good hoops. So. But yeah, you're right, she has nearly won three hills. And one of the things to look for for Soha is if she gets her forearms moving forward, she's generally pretty good. When that little bottom left hand starts whipping through, she's all over the place. also been very good at running these odd number hoops with control to the next two. Yep, yep, one of the things I've been banging on about all <laughs> tournament and at last we're seeing these players actually do very well. Often running it to level with it controls yeah. the entire area around that hoop. Oh, yeah. A wee bit short with that yellow I think. It's getting, getting uh, a lot of support from the Egyptians now, they've suddenly got a bit of hope. Yeah, and as you say that was actually a very very average shot and the Egyptians will do lots of bravoing at the slightest opportunity once their player starts to get back into a match. And that blue's good three yards short. Tough to take position from corner four to hoop two, isn't it? Yeah, probably going to get the wind somewhat going here as well. And I think she'll play a stop shot here, try and maintain Red's position rather than anything more exciting. Had yellow been a better ball, there are various opportunities maybe to cut that further into corner three and lengthen the shot but yellow really still quite a long way away from hoop two and I don't think Rachel's going to shoot here. If you had been in front of the hoop would you have thought there'd be any merit to red snuggling up against black? At that range I think tricky I'd rather try the half ball clearance to corner three. Yeah and well she's got the power to comfortably play that shot too. And yeah, here we see yellow isn't good enough for Rachel to think she needs to shoot it. And Soha will take on a hoop if she's open, but she's not. That's a super, super positional shot. So the natural play here, from my perspective, is yellow to take position. Just ignore the fact that it blacks, she's actually half clearing black, I think. No. Oh, she's trying to get really good hoop position, but the danger obviously is allowing blue to clear red to a position where yellow's in the way of the clearance. Um, it's a standard play. She's not worried about the fact that black's in front because she's saying, wherever you clear red to, I'm going to clear black. Yeah. It's a good positive line of play. Um, on the other hand, Rachel could snuggle here, but uh, it's too far away for me to think it's a good high percentage line of play. Um, but it might still be her best line of play. Yeah, I don't really like the snuggle from the frame, but it is quite interesting given the position of the balls. So perhaps I'm going to say the reason that yellow is there is to stop blue clearing it. So I didn't fancy the hoop with red. And she's tried to protect yellow with black and that was looked like an attempted snuggle that's finished short it's interesting the line she took it looked like she actually intended to get behind the ball rather than playing into it so deliberately just Hopefully you'll be able to hear Jenny a bit better now. Sorry about that, I was blocked out by a plastic box. Uh, she's got the clearance on black, but it nudged yellow further to a more angled position. Yeah, I was saying before, I felt that maybe Rachel was trying to kind of play behind red rather than a snuggle playing onto red, which limits you a lot for the, um, for the amount of well, for how hard you can hit it, because you can over hit those ones playing into the ball a wee bit, you know, hit the ball and nudge it forward a bit, but if you're actually trying to stop on a blade of grass, it's a bit more challenging. 
So Rachel now deciding yellow is good enough and she is going to try and clear it. And my view is this is definitely right because I would be playing quite smoothly yellow at the hoop and I'd be very disappointed not to get at least the draws. Yes. And she's got the clearance and that's going to get her back in the hoop. The question is, does Sohar feel blue needs moving? No, I think Sohar will just play in for the block, as we're seeing her doing now. It's just far enough back that, you know, you're going to lose control of the hoop if you clear that. And once again, two legitimate lines of play here. Rachel will take the hoop, because that's what she, she believes in. She believes in getting first go at the hoop. Right. If you wanted just to stun yellow away, and play towards the boundary with blue, so yellow towards corner two, that's playable. Yeah, I, certainly clearing the ball that's just played before you is a good option. I like this choice, I like having first go, and a lovely through the hoop, one all. Beautiful smooth shot. It's, it's always disappointing if you turn down an opportunity to have a go at your hoop and don't get another shot at the hoop. And so has been short most of the time, three, and Six. this time this is not short. And not in front either. Not in front. Okay. It'd be interesting to look back on this footage and look at these transitions, two to three, eight to nine. And it might be something like a 20%, 25% success rate. And I know we, we looked at Reggie's success rate at positional shots one year and it was 100% in one game, wasn't it? Oh, it was brilliant, yes. So... You commented to me the other day that um, Rach was very good at converting any weakness in this transition as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was never too fussed about losing hoop two, because it meant I got first play to three, I was likely to get position, fairly likely to run it down to four, fairly likely to win four, and then get the short change to five. And that's what I've generally felt through this event as well. You can have quite a big, yeah, you can be three points behind, but you just get in front of that even number two, and you've got a very good opportunity to play catch up for quite a few points. Yeah, the odd, the odd, the odd hoops, yeah. Sorry, the odd number two, yeah. So Rachel gonna clear the yellow here, and we can't quite see whether Blue's got an open shot or not. Good power there. And the indication to me, given the power Rachel's played that with, is that blue is definitely open on the hoop. Yeah. yeah Five yarder back at the blue, looking at it. No, that's missed by quite a way. Quite an interesting comment from Chris Williamson, which I, I absolutely agree with. He's saying, Come on, the English crowd who are watching at the lawns. A lot of vociferous support for Soha by his supporters. The Egyptians are always very enthusiastic. Well, there's two things about that, aren't there? English crowd, whilst they do like to support English players. They also like to support the underdog. And when Soha was 2-0 down, and even 2-1 down, there'll be part of them who'll be wanting it to go to 5. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully there'll be another group who'll go, no, come on, we want 3-1 Rachel, and we want the English woman in the final. Yeah, it'd be really good to see a lot of support from the home crowd. So blue open on the hoop, black already halfway down, on the side to hoop four. Well, no, it isn't. John. Well, I thought she'd have played the clearance with black a bit more gently if that hadn't Lovely been open. Route. Lovely distance control as well on the jump. Yes. Um, so, 
2-1 to Rachel and as we mentioned that break at hoop 3 so I had first play at it played a bad positional shot and Rachel really quite quickly converted that into not just a, uh, a win at three but clear control at hoop four. Yes. Yeah, now Sohas had to play through the hoop because she was dead in front of it and she's in a very weak position now. Blue can clear red all the way back to the north boundary. Black's taken really good position. Uh, if yellow has a target here, I'd shoot it. Yeah, I fancied that. Um, maybe didn't have a target, but it was just played down. I really did fancy having a go at anything if it looked like there was black and you know, the hoop not too far from it. Now I think blue has a choice. It's probably only got to move a matter of inches to block black at red. Yes. Sorry, move red, red, red at black. But it might not be able to block red at the hoop as well and I'm just tempted just to clear it north yeah if I can't clear both I will be having would be having red off the north boundary just give it distance so I would not be uncomfortable shooting at hoop 4 from here so if anyone who's listening has any questions we've got the laptop up and running as well so we can see your comments So obviously one possibility is yellow has blocked red hoop shot. So yes. it might just be moving it a few inches to block red at black. And that's what she's done. Yeah, she has still left the jump shot on though. Yeah, it's, it's obviously very low percentage, but any, any opportunity you've got to get back into this. Is this just open? No, I think she's still jumping. I'm not sure, but let's see if the mallet moves back and starts to go at an angle. Yes, it yeah. is. So it's over the top of blue. I missed everything. So from losing the first hoop, this should be three in a row now for Rachel and a 3-1 lead. And what's happened so far this match is that the transition from four to five has favoured Rachel. Doesn't want to be too close to red. That is very close to red. If yellow takes position, blue is going to have to clear this immediately, Jenny. Yes. Yeah, black's in a lovely position to block. So I think blue has to take this out, and probably take it out mid-pace. Mid Sorry, Wixie, for the lack of sound. We didn't have the new stream on in the comments, but thanks for pointing out that we were blocked a bit from the mic. So this is going to have to be a mid-pace clearance, but with a wee bit of power, given the returns that Soha can produce. Yeah, yeah. You can't afford just to finish sort of three or four yards away from yellow. Uh, but again, you don't want to smash it. Oh, I think the pace was perfect. Yes. But you need a three-quarter ball contact or better. So will we see Soha blocking? I don't think we're going no, to. No, no. Once blue's gone, it'll be a second ball in. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Rachel take the hoop on. Yeah, I can remember having a position like this against Iman once, and she just ran the hoop, and I thought, I really should have blocked her. Yeah, Red certainly isn't blocking. Yeah, so she's...
do you think to black into corner three here? So oh, sorry, it's black playing. Sorry, black playing. Yellow turning back, excuse me. We can clear yellow south, but if Rachel thinks it's partially blocked on blue anyway by the peg, why bother? I'm not sure it's blocked. I think black's blocked on red, but I'm not sure about this yellow and blue. Maybe. If I'm playing, I'm just playing black two feet in front of the hoop, trying to block red at the hoop. Yeah. Um, just take full control at your hoop, really. Yeah, blue isn't 100% on it from there. And I just fancy getting another ball dead in front, blocking, blocking red's hoop, in case yellow does clear the blue. At least red doesn't have a clear shot of the hoop then. That's what she's tried to do. Well, that well, oh, it's a super shot. Pretty sure that's got the block, and it's a really easy hoop for, for black. I love the depth that she's got there as well. She hasn't left any sort of easy clearance. haven't had any vast pieces of luck in this match yet. I had a question from Crohan, Crohan Network. Did Soha take hoop four? That was a that was the I don't think you should know. The jump shot was at hoop three. Go on. What happened at hoop four? So uh, Rachel just had control of hoop four throughout because she jumped down to hoop four. She had a ball halfway there already and uh, Soha ended up in all sorts of trouble and Rachel just, just won that quite comfortably. So 3-1 after yeah. hoop 4 and Soha had control at 5 but only ran it by a few yards um, really not taking full advantage and although she's got the point back to 2-3 down um, she was in big trouble at 6 and almost had that slice of luck that I was mentioning. Uh, she has almost run the hoop um, Very good line Rachel there. This is a big part of the match. Black has a jump shot it expects to make. Yes. If it makes it, it will be 4-2 up and the first ball playing to 7 will be blue because yellow can't get there. Yeah, this is absolutely massive. I, I think Rachel might have managed to cut red so that there's no double target as well. Possibly, but you, you're shooting at black, whatever, aren't you? Yes. all sorts of good things that can happen for Soha, but it's a really long shot. No. So, we've been looking at these jumps with Egyptian players and not really knowing what's going to go on. This is eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, this is the spot you want to be in to play this jump shot. Very straightforward. Should be meat and drink this. Yeah, she'll easily get over it not touching yellow. Um, very easy to get the line right from that closeness. She's far enough back to get up. Oh no, she's peeled it. Oh wow, didn't get the height. <laughs> Flick the top of yellow. And now it's three all. Yellow has first play instead of it being four two and blue getting the first play. Well, and, and look where red and black are as well. Absolutely. And the reason we're mentioning that is that if yellow can take position at seven wide from blue here, blue won't be able to hit it. And next time black plays, blue black won't be able to hit it either because red will snuggle up in front of it. She has got an opportunity here. I think she might have played this perfectly. Is she? Oh, sure? it's. It's wired, but it's on the wrong bit of the wire. It's, it's given it the yeah. the wider, more difficult angled shot, but it is runnable. So what we're seeing here is Rachel's played into jumping position here, hasn't she? I think so. Um, so Soha just asking, can she mark the black ball? And then I think the plan will be to play up to that position, replace the black, and black will be blocked from... Uh, the shot at yellow. Can you explain what's going on here then Chris? So black and red are both on the boundary. They're both effectively outside agencies at the moment. Red is about to be played into the lawn, so it goes back on the lawn. If she wants to play into black, she's allowed to mark it, move it off the lawn, and play 
up along that line and then black is replaced um, onto the lawn. As it was, she decided she was going to play a little bit further away from black to make the um, potential for a double clearance. Yes. But this is quite difficult to judge at this range. Yes. I would say this is all much less than a 10% chance of hitting. And one of Rachel's options here is to play off the left hand side of red and go down to hoop eight and say, I'm not in a good position here. You might fail the hoop, in which case I've got blue ready for you. But if you do run it, she could have played off red down to eight on side. Interesting that she's taken this line. So she's sort of tried to cover her bases. She's left red there. She's played to a position where if Soha only jaws is it, and if Rachel fails the jump, then she's got a clearance. This is going to be full power though. This is not attempting to jaws. <laughs> this is not going to stop in the jaws, is it? So this is one of Soha's strengths, I think. Good shot. Well placed black. So from what looked like potential 5-2 deficit, she's now 4-3 ahead. Yes. Yeah, just that one error at the hoop. I, I wonder if that was prompted by that jump shot that cleared the hoop in the previous game. Maybe. This is very close to hoop 8, but potentially angled. I'm not sure if that's running it. Um, I think if I was Chris, Chris would be playing down to a jumping position, wouldn't you? I'll be certainly doing what Sohar's doing. I'm taking the long walk down to have a look at exactly where it is. And the fact that she's turned around so quickly, to me, indicates blues in front. And she's having to go at the hoop. And this is going to be a big thrash at um, the hoop, with blue as a potential bonus target if she misses on the right. Yeah. I think it's really important to actually take that walk all the way down and be fully aware of the position of that blue ball. So Soha knows that yellow probably isn't going to get a shot. Yes, um, yellow will be shooting at nothing. Uh, so black can just nudge up to yellow and yellow can't get anywhere near blue. So this might be her only go at hoop eight. But we saw her get to the jaws of hoop six from a long way away. Can we get play this at a medium pace? I'm going to go hard, Jenny. It's in the frame, it's in the frame, no, in between the two targets. Now, what black needs to stop is yellow flicking it off it to hoop nine. I think she's played that well. So I think she's played it not not well. I want to be on the opposite side of yellow. Right. Um, so she's on the left hand side of yellow as we look at it. If she's on the right hand side, yellow can't get anywhere near nine either. I thought she'd played it close enough that yellow wouldn't get down there, but no, there was a perfectly big gap there, wasn't there? And now at 4 3 down, Rachel has a choice of running the hoop or taking position wide from red. It's another case where I thought Rachel just stayed back a bit from the ball. With her previous snuggle, she was a bit short. That one I'd like to see millimetres between the balls. And that was a deliberate choice. That was not attempting to run the hoop. Um, so she's given red an easier clearance, but she's given yellow virtually no clearance. Yeah, and she's telling red, yellow to come back on side before the hoop gets run. Yeah, could have taken wide position from red to make red impossible, but yellow would have had the open shot. not fully central in the jaws either. No boss. Very, very good shot. I was going to say, the, it's interesting, if you go fully in the middle of the jaws, you are just asking to be cleared, but being a little bit further out, there's always the possibility, if they clear you, that they will actually run the hoop. At 4-3 down, I would have gone wide from red. 
so in front of the hoop, allowed red to play in front, allowed black to play in front, and allowed yellow to shoot at back at me, knowing that if it hit, I still had this nice eastward clearance. Potentially be able to win eight and move my ball towards nine as well. Uh, I'd have probably done the opposite, four three up, but four three down. I think uh, I think that would have been my preferred line of play, L forcing the clearance with yellow rather than red. Yeah, I mean we saw the yeah she obviously played a really good shot, but she didn't hit all of the target. So if you had been a bit outside of the jaws, that would have been a miss. Yeah, she's caught a lot of the wire in that clearance. And Blue's in a bit of trouble here now. Red, red is already blocking black at yellow. Um, Where are you going to play red to? Let's assume that Blue doesn't disturb these balls. I'm going to move red so black has to hit it half ball on the left to clear yellow so that if she does get the double clearance black's going a long way away. Well if she doesn't get the clearance red's going to hoop nine as well probably. Correct. And it might force a jump out of black then. Yes. So you'd keep it basically on that line and just move it north south. Yeah, you? just literally, you know, an inch. Um, and that was why Rachel felt the need to shoot there. This very weak position she's in now. I think quite a weak option a lot of people take here is they leave the ball on that north south line, but they put it absolutely smack bang between black and yellow. Yeah, you don't want it to be a straight clearance. You want black to have to hit at least. Yeah, half ball. That's gone for the snuggle. And I don't think this is difficult. I think this should be at least a 50% success rate to get the double clearance. Yeah, at this distance I think you need to be a lot closer if you're going to do this. Wow. Oh, she left that shot open. Well, nothing wrong with that. If Rachel had got one ball more on black... There's a lot that's wrong with it where it is now though. Yeah, it doesn't look like it can get to nine. I like the the option rather than that sort of quarter ball double clearance um, where red is probably still going to finish quite close because you can't get a lot of power into it so you're only going to move them a few yards yeah. um, getting black in front of the hoop there would have been very strong yes. particularly against a weak jumper yeah we did see a good shot, jump shot from Soha but we've seen a couple of pretty average ones Second prize. Second prize, that was quite an easy hoop, so she'll be disappointed by that. She's still um, largely in control of this though. Yeah, and that was a chance to win four consecutive hoops, wasn't it? Yeah, with black, absolutely pinned on the hoop as well. Yeah, so a fantastic opportunity to take a 5-3 lead. But this is how some of these things turn. Trying to get wired from red here behind yellow. And it's just open, I think. Is it a gentle clearance on blue, do you reckon? I mean, two minds. I'm, I'm always looking for this promotion on yellow, but I think it's too aggressive here. So <coughs> I, I am probably going to gently clear blue. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I very often look for these promotions. I quite like doing that, but. Um, yeah, if Rachel then clears you, get, especially given Rachel's power. If you hit this in the middle, gently, red finishes in running position and yellow can clear blue. And that's what she's tried to do. Probably hit it a foot to 18 inches firmer than I would have done. Yeah. got the clearance but black's been lost a long way away from hoop 8 and we'll just see yellow play back in here. Yeah I mean Rachel's still well in this but she is going to have to play a big clearance from over by hoop 8 or hoop 9. I think she should clear yellow here. Let red have the hoop. Attempt. Yep. 
if red runs at least black's nice over by nine. Can you clear yellow to stay in jumping position? I think it's tough. Plus this is one of those hoops that you don't jump if it's only speculative. I think she's done what I would have tried to do and hit it a little bit on the left so that if red comes out and finishes in front but not in the jaws, blue can still clear it. Yes. Um, I think Soha will be happy with this option as well. You know, a chance to go 5-3 up, you're never turning that down. I don't know whether she's going hard, medium or soft here. I think anything is possible. Soha's preferred option is hard normally. Yeah, it's quite angled though. This is gentle. Lucky there, I, think. I, I thought she started on our right hand wire and it hilled over to the left hand wire. I think so, but then it hit that far wire and just bounced back to somewhere actually really difficult to clear with blue. I agree. It, it is clearable, but it's a tough shot. It's also, well, is so hard going to take this clearance on blue? I think possibly not now. I think possibly not. Rachel's surrendered. Yeah, Rachel's giving up here. Need to be careful with Rachel, she'll often give up with one ball but not quite with the other. But this one, it's it's far too risky I think to clear with blue, there's so many scenarios in which blue, clear, blue rush peels red. Uh, right, blue's going halfway here. Yeah, you rush peel red there, this game's over. Or well, this game's in a lot of strife. So that's left a rush? Yes. But you'd never play it, would you? No. No, it's black's just... Well, black and blue are too close to hoop nine to play it. Take position with one, clear with the other. Especially never if you're the first to play for the hoop. Just a reminder for viewers, um, this is the fourth game, Rachel 2-1 ahead and Sohar 5-3 up in the fourth game, having been 5-4 down in the third game. Good positional shot from Rachel. Yeah, it was just that absolutely fabulous clearance, that's a poor positional shot, you need to get somewhere you can look at running the hoop. Yes, it was just that one absolutely superb shot in the third game that turned things around there and really kept Soha fully, fully back in the match. And Red's shot at black is blocked, so Red will play in here. Two really good balls by Rachel. Really two pretty average balls. Um, from Soha, unfortunately. Yeah, I say she was really good positionally and uh, when she won the Worlds last time and people forget about that because they look at her power and dynamic sh shots but it was a position taking that really allowed her to, to dominate matches and today she hasn't done that. Now that is a big surprise. Yes. And Soha's getting fully punished by having not got either of her balls in front of the hoops. So that's done blue away. Keeping position. And that's saying to Rachel, if you leave yellow there, red's going to clear black a million miles away. So Rachel's got a choice. She can clear the yellow, or she can take this long hoop on. I think she's looking to hoop. And I'm a bit surprised at that, I guess at 5-3 down, you don't just want to run this, you want to run it all the way up. And running a seven yard hoop on its own is a tough shot. She ran a few good ones yesterday, but she was shooting better yesterday. I think she's got time to take yellow out here and regroup. It might be a sort of a regrouping thing playing the shot though, it might be just gaining a bit of confidence going, yes I can do this, but it can have the opposite effect if it's unsuccessful. Another go at the hoop. And she knows when playing that that red can't run. Yeah, and 
provided she hits the hoop, she's staying in the vicinity. Goodness, I thought she was really going to smash Black away here. Oh, I'm amazed that Black isn't tearing its way towards corner two as we speak. Um, do you think that means she's not that confident running the hoop with yellow? Yes, I do. I do. I do think that's genuinely what it says. Um, she's tried to block Black at yellow. What I'm worried of here is that Black just snuggles in front. Yellow clears blue. Blue gets a chance to smash red away from behind the hoop. If it can see red. If it can see red. And then black, uh, red's still forced to play a jump shot. It's a very nice jump shot position though. Maybe she's a wee bit to the side of the hoop, I don't know. Uh, tried for the double clearance, I think, there. Yeah. And so as uh, decision making has worked out. Yellow's now got a free go at the hoop. Yes. Yeah, she's got away with this very well. But. You know, if she smeared black to the other side of the lawn, she'd have had a free go at the hoop as well, probably. Obviously, Rachel would have had to shoot back. I think my point is that Rachel wouldn't have had to shoot back. Rachel could have decided, no, yellow's going to have a go at the hoop, but when it fails, my black's going to be in position. Yeah, quite right. And yeah, she's also got the percentage chance of getting a blocking position as she rolls back in. So, not an easy hoop, but for a 6-3 lead. And blue's not in front, we believe. Yeah, yeah, it's a free go. But she doesn't want to hit the outside of this. Bravo. Yeah, that scored the point. A little hop again. <laughs> She knows a 6-3 lead's big. I think it's a wee hop of, oh thank goodness, as well. Yeah, it's definitely through on that. Yeah. From our angle, oh no, we're just getting a referee to make sure. From our angle, it's probably through by a good, what, two or three mil? Yeah, I hope the referee does get quite low down to check this. We've previously seen a ref have a bit of a look from the top and then bring out a bit of string. Now generally, if you get down to the level of the ball, you can see quite clearly if it's through or not. Uh, Richard, yeah, Richard Brooks. Didn't take long there, it's clearly through. Yeah, again, they look down the line, lines of the wires and look pretty through to us. And a lot of you will think, well, we're about to head into the fifth. But you won from 6 3 down uh, earlier in the event, didn't you? I did against uh, Merva and also got to 6 all against Rachel. So, from 6 3 down. So, you know, if you, if you can win that next two. You've got the transition hoop where you've got the short clearance. Now, if red's, uh, if black, sorry, if blue's as good as I expected it's there, red might have a pop. I thought blue might be on the outside wire. I'm not really sure of that. Yeah, not clear from that. She sort of moved around to the side, suggesting it might be on a wire. If it's on the wire, you just play up to jumping range, don't you? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where it is. It might be that there's oh. no jumping spot you can't be cleared from. Well, Rachel's moved in and it, it clearly doesn't run, I don't think. She might be able to make the front of the jaws. Uh, the jumping spot's sort of at 30 degrees on the right-hand side here. Right. Yeah, I mean, otherwise you've just got the option coming on that eastern side so that blue can't clear you. And that's a good shot. I'm pretty sure blue won't be able to clear red. It's obviously a long way away from jumping range. I thought it looked like blue might be able to clear it. I really don't know. We don't know exactly where it is. And anyway, when you're clearing hard and you've got a hoop leg very near you, that puts a bit more doubt in your mind and a bit more risk on the shot too. And, and yellow isn't bad here. Um, so far I can get it all the way up to 10. Yeah, you've got a free swing on yellow. Rachel again playing with some pace here. That's gone can't believe she was trying to get there. No, she well, she might have been having a gentle go at getting to the jaws of the hoop. I don't, I don't think that's her style though at all. If you're 6-3 down and you've got a sort of neutral position, you want your balls on the short boundary side. Yes. And that black is not nowhere near a short boundary side. And Soha's now over hit her shot. And again, it looks like there's a hill falling away east to west. Yeah, it did look like they may have moved a bit. Blue nudges in front, nothing wrong with that. Strong position here for Rachel. Um, chance for a jump. 
a little bit long and so far isn't naturally inclined to take this type of shot. I'm anxious about the jump here. If you put blue through, it's just horrible. And she's got the power to brush us a long way away. Oh. Hasn't gone for the full angle of it, but it's a nice clearance. Now, the good thing about that is if black clears yellow or blue fails to clear blue properly and red's in a really nice place to get to hoop 11. That's true yes. and it's a protection of that 6-3 potentially 6-4 lead. Yeah it's where I think people underestimate the tactics of the Egyptians they keep thinking about them as being power players but they're also really intelligent about protecting the next hoop protecting a lead and I think the other thing is we can say at least 60% of the players here, of the Egyptians, are not power players. Yes. They're precision, back ball control, short distance clearing, tactical players. Yeah, there was a comment I noticed on one of the Facebook pages, one of the Egyptians talking about the fact that Egypt doesn't have dorsum balls. So these players may have a few sets, I'm not sure if there's a few kicking around, but they don't regularly play with those sort of balls. They play with much harder balls, don't they? They they do. Um, the Egyptian Open now played with the Dawsons, but they are a bit like gold dust in Egypt and being allowed to play with a set. It's, well, you've been selected to play for your country, okay, we'll get this set of Dawsons out for you. Um, and yeah, they could do with playing more games with them. Well, given the production issues, that might become the case in other parts of the world. Uh, that's a good shot. Interesting um, if it's worth taking on the hoop at 6-3 down with black, if you get the chance. I, I'm going to clear blue here, I think. I don't want black to run the hoop with blue there, 6-3 up. Yeah, will black take on the hoop, do you reckon? It should do, it's a free go with a great blue. Yeah. Um, so that's the whole concept of these clearances pointing east to west. Once you've got your hoop, you take your hoop on and blue is only three and a half, four yards away from hoop 11. Yeah, and even if it's a lower percentage hoop, there's just such an upside of achieving this. And, and Rachel knows if she misses the hoop, blue can still clear red. Yeah. That's a okay position. It's blocked red shot. Yeah, blue's got to come back on side, but you'll take that. Yeah, I think I agree with you that clearing blue was the optimal option there. I'm not 100% sure if this has blocked a few bravos from the Egyptians, but they're also really trying to cheer their champion on and encourage her. Now, blue's open on red. Um, I think Rachel will be trying to cut this on the left hand side to maximise the chance that if red hits black it might rush peel it. Yeah, if she, if she manages to push it south enough, it may be that red doesn't take the shot on. It's not, it's a bit too central. Yeah, She's Followed on, indicating that it's very close to being blocked by blue. Wants the spot to be accurate, um, but it looks open to me. And uh, whilst it is rush peelable, you'd have to flick it on the left-hand side, wouldn't you? Yeah, with this angle, you're definitely taking on the clearance. Just another five yards further south, that element of doubt starts coming into your mind. Good shot, good shot. She hasn't got the full distance, but she'll take that every day. And you need to shoot at yellow here. Yes. This is turning into a fabulous match. Ah, <laughs> oh, good shot. Good shot. Now you see that was the combination of the English support and the support for the underdog because she's 6-3 down you see. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, what we will see if Sohan is successful in this game that 
all the English players, all the underdog supporters will go back to supporting, all the English ones will go back to supporting Rachel. They'll get their decider and now they can have two equally matched players. And that's just a neutral ball put in on the opposite side to black and blue, hopefully wiring itself from black. Doesn't want to allow blue to take position and then black to clear yellow, getting black towards that hoop 11 area. Yeah, Rachel's got so much control over that area of the lawn at the moment. Is that wide from yellow is the question? No. Ooh, it must be close if she's looking at that or is she looking at the black oh, I clearance? I think she's looking at the black clearance. Whatever it is, I think red's just going to play back in here. Yeah, there's nothing to clear there. She played in very, very deep. Yep. I guess to some extent she has to protect from black clearing, clearing red getting in front of group 11. Well that, that looks like the shot that Rachel's playing and I still think yellow is open on blue but... Um, I think it might be the way Rachel's paused with that because if they're wired you're just 100% having a go at red. The, the natural shot to me here is black takes hoop position, yellow clears blue, blue clears red to the west boundary getting to 11. Yes. That's what I'm playing for as Rachel. Um, so black should just be taking position and unless I've got this wrong about yellow not being able to see blue, in which case well, you might as well take this immediate shot, which is quite short as well, yes. black at red. I don't think she hit that hard enough. No, that that's a neutral staying in the hoop shot. She, she's yeah. pushed red to 11. Yeah, so yellow can see blue. Uh, so yellow must be open on blue. And even if it isn't, I'm expecting blue to jaws rather than run. That's not very good. That's just offered blue at yellow with a stop shot. Um, yeah. You needed to hit that much harder. Absolutely, yeah. This is just blue clearing yellow to miles away and many opportunities to stay, be stay beautifully in front of the hoop. Um, that, no, that's a deliberate play, that's a tactical play, that's saying I'm prepared to run the hoop with blue from there yeah. and black is going to clear yellow with a stop shot staying by 11. Right, okay, so it's feeding the ball into black. Yeah, feeding a ball into black, it's a deliberate 6-3 down play. And that is attempting to block the shot and it's missed the block. Yeah, but equally it's saying look, blue's got a long hoop, you fail it, I'm going to have a hoop myself. Yeah, I'm just winning it. Um, and we'll probably see yellow play back in, won't we, after it's been... Clear. Yellow might as well shoot because blue is going to try and run the hoop. Yeah. There's uh, with red there already. Yellow is going to have a pop at blue. Um, but I do think this is a designed play by Rachel. If anything, she overhit it by a yard. She would have preferred yellow to be a yard closer to black. Yeah. And here with this clearance, you'll notice that black was a, got a bit of a bobble and was off the ground when it hit yellow, which is why it's carried on so far. Still not a bad black. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's clearing anything that goes near that hoop off the side boundary south of the peg. Or off the south boundary. So, definitely open on the blue. And providing she fancies the hoop with red, oh, I, might, I might as well shoot here. Yeah, just not letting her have that advantage at hoop 11 is important. <laughs> The upside of playing there is it's got shorter clearances at 11. Yeah. Well that is the problem, if you start shooting at things you end up on boundaries when the next hoop comes up and when you need to make a clearance. Yeah. I guess if black had been better she might have shot at blue. But she's saying actually I'm prepared to go to neutrality here and say you run it, black's not actually as big a threat as it might have been. Yeah. And now Red gets this hoop. She's she pretty angled. The, is she taking the hoop or will she just stop black or blue away? It's 
don't understand the choice of going there. It looks too close to blue to me. Surely if you're going somewhere... Well, you've got everywhere that you want to go apart from between blue and yellow and I think she could have gone quite a lot closer to the hoop if she'd chosen to. Now Rachel's got the block and this will be clearing black, won't it? Well, it's blue runnable here. Yeah? No. No, it bounced off the side, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, you can clear both of them, but as long as you clear black, it's not a disaster. I think both of them is well on. Good shot. Beautiful shot. So, in, in playing that shot, you have to hit it a little bit harder than you normally would, though, so it means that yellow's moved out of position. But, yeah, very nicely played shot. Needs to hit this to stay in the game. Needs and to hit it probably fairly centrally as well. And then probably needs to absolutely smash yellow so that black will follow on and get in front of the hoop. I'm not sure that's as necessary. If, if black can see red, after red plays back in, I'm more tempted to clear red. I don't think yellow's runnable. That's not, I'm not in the middle enough. So red will play back wired from black. Yeah, it'll use yellow as some protection. Yeah. That looks good. Lots of bravoing. So if black can see red, it will clear it. Yeah. Otherwise it will need to play some sort of double clearance. Hop over black, over yellow can be quite successful as well sometimes, but it's quite handy to get rid of both of them at once. Yeah. But she's got the second prize, she's got the hoop position, meaning if blue can clear red, black's in runnable position. Well, I'm also slightly interested in what sort of target blue might have. I think it only has got a ball to shoot at though. I think yeah. the hoop's probably a good eight inches away from that line of the ball. Yeah, then yellow will play back in. Fraction too far. Yes, good clearance um, from Rachel, and this hoop's back to evens. Good shot in the middle, very close to wired. Rather close to following on to the jaws with blue, I felt as well. Yep. Lovely central clearance, that. Playing back in, do you reckon? Yes, I do. I can't see any chance that Red's going to risk being down by corner four and missing. Remember, a 6-3 lead, you need to play protective shots in there as well. Ian, can you do us a favour? Yep. Sucker. Please, can you count the crowd for us? Okay. So, I'll, I'll be back. Lovely, thank you very much. Yeah, there's a big crowd here. It's, um, a few people behind us near the clubhouse, but lining both the west and east boundaries. Good hoop. Good hoop. This game's not over yet. 6-4. Six, 6-4, four. Six, four. not only that, but blue and black have both got relatively short shots down towards hoop 11. They have, and it's going to be very interesting um, as to what Rachel does. I think she'll try and play blue behind the yellow. Are you going to take the risk, given how good yellow is with red blocking it? Yes, I am. Black's a Ooh, nice... Dear. Oh dear, 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 dear. That's, that's blocked, you can tell from Rachel's body language. That is a game loser, I think. And black hasn't even run it to the boundary, so the, the hoop's more difficult as well. Yeah, yeah, that's normally your backup if you block yourself or are blocked by your opponent. That's short. It's, oh. a, it's an attempt to block the hoop, to be right, fair to so okay. far. I so, tend to find that disappointing the second shot people play sometimes there. This is trying to block yellow, either the stance, the swing, something. Just get something in the way of yellow's shot. Yeah. 
and this is to equalise at two games all. 90 watching. 90 people here watching this match. Well, That's Richard, a lovely trap. Richard Brooks going on to tap in the, the hoop before Soha takes on this match equaling shot for two all. It won't be. It won't be soft. Oh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Wins this game uh, eight four, I believe. I think it flicked off the near wire actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, two games all. Rachel again going to get first play to hoop one. Remember in that game four, wasn't a great shot and Soha broke at hoop one straight away. Yes, but then Rachel broke back at hoop two, three. Two, three and four. Won yep. three consecutive hoops, three one up, and she's lost six of the last eight hoops. Um, I mentioned in, in that first stage of the match, the first three games, I didn't think Rachel was anywhere near her best. Again, I didn't think she was anywhere near her best in that one. This is the time you need to suddenly produce your form. Yeah, I think Soha really stepped up there, though, which is the dangerous thing. She's now got a bit of confidence. She's taken two games. Um, I think we're going to have a cracking finale. I mean, to be honest, to some extent, this is the final that people might have hoped to see. Absolutely. Um, very exciting. Um, some good shots. Some surprising failures. Yes. You can do this so hard. Good luck. Thank you. It was lovely talking to Soha after her match. Was it a quarter final against Noha? Last 16 against Noha. That was her best friend. Yeah, she was really upset after the match. Um, it was really sweet. She said, look, this is my best friend I've played. So what's your thoughts of what we're going to see in the fifth game? Well, Soha starting to get the wind behind her. Yep. Um, always a danger player as she feels things are going in her favour, feels more fluent. I think Rachel is better. I think Rachel's had a poor match so far. Um, I think she's a strong match player and I think she's capable of getting back to her best in the decider. Um, and I'm hoping Soha is going to play well against her and that we're going to get a really exciting match. If you ask me to guess, I think Rachel is still the favourite. Yep, um, yeah, I, as you say, Rachel hasn't played to her best, but I think what's happened here in this match, she's very, very capable of finding that extra gear now. Yeah, yeah she's got two more gears to find. Um, one, one might be enough. Yeah. Um, she just needs to get a few more central clearances, um, a few more hoops. We saw a couple of surprising hoop failures there from her. Um, so providing a hoop running can hold up, I think she's still got the game to come through and take the fifth. I think in Soha's favour she's got the big clearances, she's got the power game, just a little bit more than Rachel. Yep, Rachel's power's good. Um, Soha probably has a little bit more, um, but I don't think power is going to be what determines this game. I think it's going to be determined by good positional play combined with solid hoop running. I think Rachel's easily the strongest hoop runner as well. Has been. We've seen weaknesses throughout this match. Well, looking ahead to the final, um, you know, Jamie's hoop running has been excellent. I think she struggled on the slightly floppier hoops today. Yeah, I just probably got a little bit worse as the match went on rather than better. Yes. I'm always looking for the opposite from players. Um, but that first game she played this morning, um, very, very strong. Um, oh, she was magnificent yesterday. One of the interesting things is um, playing in your first final is difficult. Yeah, I, I go on about that a lot, don't I? Particularly when you're playing someone who's been there before, and both these are past or current 
world called world champions. Yes. Yes, so both of them have played in the big matches. As you said, Rachel's got a string of um, victories and all sorts of open events to her name as well. And I think Sohar's got some extremely strong performances in open play in Egypt behind her. Yeah, we should mention Sohar was a member of the Egypt Openshaw Shield team. They sent a squad of six. Yes. And I believe Sohar won every one of the games in that event, um, but wasn't selected for the final four to play New Zealand. Um, so, very experienced player, very strong, um, really looking forward to this fifth game. Uh, it, it really is on a knife edge. Yeah. Uh, I have said I think Rachel's a slight favourite, but it is slight. Yeah, I think the winner today will be the favourite tomorrow, but Jamie has looked really composed. Yeah. She, you know, she can keep that going, her swing's been a beautiful tempo throughout, uh, even when things were getting a bit against her today. We noticed with Jamie that there are a couple of times with her stance that her mallet was slightly bent forward, just a few degrees. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a deliberate technique decision from her. Uh, so the toe is on the ground and the heel is raised. <laughs> and it's the opposite to, to what I coach. Uh, I would always prefer to play with the, the toe a fraction, a millimetre off the ground. And it just helps with the stop shots. And most of the time Jamie's playing clearances, it's hitting the ball in the middle rather than, I think, one of the things we looked at before the event was I said, OK, you've hit that three-yarder or two-yarder in the middle. Now I want you to play with a stop shot. Yes. And if you can play stop shots at that two-yard range, then you can have much better control over where your ball finishes. Because you're getting it to skid, you're getting a full ball-on-ball -ball contact, and knowing exactly where your ball's going to finish when you're hitting a two-yard clearance is a major skill of the game. Yeah. Uh, so I think Jamie Moore clears and her ball finishes wherever it finishes, whereas a lot of the Egyptian players will play good stun clearances with excellent back control. As will Rachel. As will Rachel, yes. I think the other thing though that's in, in Jamie's favour though is she's just spent the last year winning most things that she's played in. You know, getting into a winning habit's quite strong as well. It is, it is. Um, I think more important is the having been in a world championship final before um, both of these players have not only been in one they've won one yes um, so i'm going to give if rachel wins i think rachel's clear favorite if soha wins i think soha is fractional favorite um, quite an interesting question here how does a big day for the winner of today how will that influence tomorrow but it's not a match that's going to go on till 6 p.m. Yeah. On the other hand, I think we have to note Rachel is pregnant. So she's 23 weeks pregnant. And having a best of five match the day before that goes to five is going to put additional stresses on her body that she's not used to. Yeah, your back might be a bit more achy. It tends to be a feature of pregnancy and having been on her feet for so long. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a valid question. Um, I think normally, if you play a five hour best of five, it's neither here nor there. You've had a bit more practice, if anything else. Yeah, you've come through winning it. You're feeling pretty positive about things, I think. Yeah, it's not going to be what we saw in the Fulford Bamford match at the Open last year, that semi final that went to five and lasted nine and a quarter hours. <coughs> in what you remember was probably quite a hot day. And that will have been draining yep. for both players, never mind the winner. Um, today, there's no real heat. Um, it's not going to be a nine and a quarter hour match. And I don't think it will have a major impact on tomorrow's final. Yeah, I think the World Championships, you know, I did wonder last year if maybe Reg was still just feeling the lagging effects of COVID. He'd been quite ill with that. Um, so I think fitness might have played a bit of a role in the it was quite a nutritional match. It was it was a long, long, difficult match. And these are much shorter. I mean we go we've been going since what about ten o'clock? Yeah, ten o'clock start today. It was um, now three PM. But they've had a short lunch break. Yeah. Um and you know, they had a couple of five, ten minute breaks between games for a drink and a, a convenience break. And it's not hot. Um, it's slightly cool actually, beautiful conditions for playing apart from that wind which is a little bit annoying. So Rachel now walking back to the lawn. 
so are still not um, back. Yeah. Yep. Rachel's stocked up on her orange chocolate buttons. And I just want to be visualising blue taking position at hoop one. It's an interesting thing. In, in Egypt, I believe, there is allowed some practice and a few strokes between games. And certainly not in a WTF event. That's um, strictly against the regulations. But yeah, five minutes between games just to go to the loo, have a drink. Maybe, maybe if you want to, have a quick snack. But some salt or carbs, just to keep you going. But also, nothing can stop you having a five minute practice between these games and that you can visualise it. And doing the visualisation, it's not 100% as good as the physical practice, but it's getting along on the way there. So yeah, you can just see in your mind, see your smooth swing, stand there and cast a bit, and practice your swing, and yeah, see your ball in that spot in front of one. One of the good things is we haven't had any rain for the past, you know, probably two or three hours. Uh, lawns will be very much the same pace throughout this match, um, and I think they're easy to take position on. Uh, probably running about 10 seconds, and really you should be in front of these hoops all the time. And the lawns have been pretty true. I mean, there's, a, you know, there's some gentle hills, but clearing, it's generally straight to stay true to where you've hit it. You've generally had fairly central contact rather than balls bobbling up. And there we go, that's a club member who's going to be enjoying the fifth game, walking past with a full bottle of rosé and two glasses. <laughs> so um, I hope he has an enjoyable fifth. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really good atmosphere here, there's loads of people here. So hard just walking past us, ready for the decider. I think the hoops have been tapped down between the games. Yes, I sort of looked away a bit when we were chatting, but I suspect there must have been. So, what the crowd wanted? Yep. So, yeah, Rachel's now seeing herself in the position of being, what, 5-4 up, was it, or 4-3 up in game three? 5-3 up, 2-0 up, Yep. and now we're starting the fifth. But she'll just look at it and go, no, new game, fresh start, and she's starting this game. Yep. So she's got that wee advantage right from the start. I think we said earlier this is the first meeting between these two, so it's a match that we've been looking forward to having. Yeah, great to have two past world champions playing, obviously one's current as well. Yeah. Um, but great to get the, the matches between the, the top players. So off we go, um, blue is a little bit short, it's runnable. It's not bad, I might be having a positional shot and a shot at this. Certainly I'm not shooting twice at that. No. And so I will do Chris's option of playing in between blue and the hoop. I'm pretty sure this is a position where Rachel would be likely to go back from the, the ball. A lot of bravos. I mean, Rachel's going to have options here. I think she'll just take on the hoop if her ball's still there. But depending on what yellow does, there's also this option of just stop shotting red away, which well, I think she'll be taking. Her. Certainly, blue can't run the hoop anymore. I think that black is in line. So, given the fact that we know blue's going to probably play that stop shot, how is that going to affect Soha's choice? Yeah, I think she'll be trying to play in front of all three three of those towards the hoop. Yeah, I don't think she'll be shooting anymore. There's no need to shoot. Red's going to get a shorter shot back at black than yellow's got at blue. And if you shoot, you're likely to give, end up with red having a much, much longer shot. This is travelling. Oh, that's gone. That black. That's not in front. And it's also a blocking line. Rachel might be aiming for this wire. No, I thought she might take that at a slightly narrower angle to try and use yellow to, 
to protect black. But she's just opted for a nice smart stop shot to keep both her balls in front. Yeah, guaranteeing blues in front. Handy. So how might shoot at that? Well, clearly thinks Black's hoop is failable, and the truth is it is failable. Yes. But equally, it's not very angled. It's runnable down to hoop two. Or something. That's my thought looking at that. It's only about 15, 20 degrees, and four, four, five <laughs> foot couple of pitch invaders over there. Yeah, the seagulls have been enjoying the pears on lawn four, haven't they, from that pear tree? Yeah, somehow they seem to think that the, the right move was to take their pear, take it to corner four, and then destroy it all over the lawn. So, the first hint of how this fifth game is going to play out. We've had the hoop turned down, and we've had a Fairly neutral clearance. It feels a bit like nerves to me. I just thought Rachel all day long would have taken on that hoop. That's red to play, isn't it? Um, I think it's yellow to play. It is, because you just cleared red. Sorry, I apologise. And this could suggest that black's in the way of blue, do you think? Or she just doesn't want to get in this, this sort of out of position? No, this is, um, that was trying to block um, the hoop. And I think she's left the hoop open. She also left herself in a bit of trouble getting the hoop too, has she? She has. Yeah, it's, um, this is going to cost her. It's, Blue can run. On the other hand, if blue fails, the red is all, all over the black. Where is it? Oh, it has got the block. So, I think black was the black blocking was ball. the blocking ball. So that's why yellow's played in. Um, blue had no obvious other line of play than the jump, and red's got a short clearance to a long way away. The, the great thing from Rachel's point of view is I think Blue's blocked Yellow's hoop. Yeah, can Yellow get up in time? I don't think the Egyptians can get that height that quickly. Not with their, their Irish grip, it makes it much more difficult. Rachel fetches that. I'm going to have a look at what hoop shot Yellow's got. So, I think that clearance from Soha was a massive, massive shot because it was the first big and powerful forcing shot that had to be played in this game. And she has hit it really well, which is going to give her a lot of confidence. So Yellow's almost dead straight in front and Blue is blocking about a fifth of the hoop, so you have to go over Blue. Has um, Black gotten it off? Possibly, if you if you got lucky, Blue is probably overhanging a bit too much of the hoop to make it easy. Right, um, and also if you do go for the in off and simply clear Blue, then Yellow's all the way up to hoop two, very very trivially. So Black will be shooting at Yellow here, but I still think it's quite an acute job. It, yeah. it, it's, I'd be really happy with that. It's my natural little hop over it, no problem whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure so I can get the height as quickly. Yeah, I would argue this is like a little AC jump shot, which I like playing, a little association croquet one. Say you've jaws something at Rover and you're jumping over it. Um, with golf croquet, there's, they're normally flatter jumps. Oh dear, that's a disaster. That was going for, for the enough, I think. No, that was clearing yellow. It was missing yellow, was Rachel it? would not have taken the enough. No. It's right. too aggressive. Oh, thank you. So, Andrew Hobbs has just put a couple of screenshots up. 
onto Facebook showing Sohan's wee jump of excitement. So an immediate break, just like game four. She didn't run it far enough though, did she? She didn't, but it, it is still controlling an area. It's not going to run a hoop two, but it is going to clear that blue ball. So if red can play in, oh, oh and that's good. That is really good. So Wix has made a very good point. Actually, blue can see the hoop, but yeah, it'll be uncomfortable. Wix has made a really good point. At least blue can get to hoop two now. Yes. Blue was in all sorts of trouble if yellow succeeded with the wee hole. I was very tempted to let her have a go at that hop. Yeah. But I would still have tried to clear that like, ball. Like you said, the, the pace was suggesting that it was a clearance. Now where black's finished potentially gives a wired spot for blue on the boundary. Um, if yellow hits blue on the right, there's a danger of clearing your partner ball. This is the hoop. No, 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 this is blue. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't, when the angle looked like poop to me, that's that's a good shot. And also you can see, with the Egyptian getting a little bit of ascendancy, how excited the Egyptian crowd get, and that's a problem. Certainly, having lost the last two games and having first player at hoop one, the last thing you want to do is be 2-0 down in the decider. Oh, absolutely, yes. I think... Uh, she can she's see this. can see this, so although black isn't in front, so it's only a to, to stay in the hoop rather than to have a big advantage. This will be firm, I think. Good shot. Oh, lovely shot in the middle. And now, this is quite interesting. Can black jaws? Can black run? It isn't natural for red to have a go at the hoop here. This is the natural thing is just to play back in yep. without leaving black an easy stun, stun away. Yeah, so where are you playing back into? So I'm playing between blue and the hoop, so if black stuns away it's going to be out of hoop running position. Yep. This is a gentle go at the hoop. Yeah, I like this line of play. Hmm. Lots of bravos, and I think she's sort of waving them off, saying this wasn't what I was looking I, for. I, I don't like. And the thing that gives black a stun clearance on red is weak. Now, admittedly, black's finished on the on the wrong side. You always want to be on the western side for hoop two. It's so close to the hoop, isn't it? Yeah, and this will be a neutral ball, just moving closer in. Um, I'm hoping to wire from black, is it, or is black too far north? No, I don't. I, I'm not sure that's particularly relevant, but Rachel will regard this as a free go. It is a free go, but look where red is. You run this, you're giving up a lot of control at hook three. I think, I think that's a fair point, particularly given how bad Sohar's position taking has been at three. Um, Perhaps playing to position on the eastern side to allow black a nice blocking line might yeah, be better. I like that. Oh dear. And there was always the risk of this happening from that distance from a bit of an angle. I do quite like the idea of controlling this Egyptian crowd because you know they're lovely supporters, but if you can get them feeling a bit worried. Um, if you can get the Egyptians feeling a bit worried and feeling that their players are a little bit behind, they're a lot quieter. I think that's quite helpful. I'm, I'm thinking yellow's going to take position and red's going to smash black away. I don't like the angle on red to smash black away. I think I'd rather take black out here. The last thing you want to do is accidentally rush people with black. And now I want Rachel oh, to gosh. clear red. What about clearing black? Uh, sorry, clearing yellow, sorry. No, I want to clear red in this case. Black's so good, right. this is the time you play your good shot. If you play your good shot on yellow, yeah, black will still get cleared by red. Well, I 
well, yeah, I'm still interested in how safe is it doing this clearance. I think she'll love this. Right. I think she'll really fancy this. And that should absolutely guarantee that she rush peels it, shouldn't it? <laughs> the fact that you love it, yes. <laughs> but no, I think she'll be licking her lips at this one. This is just going to go to corner three. She's good at these half Or that sort of area. It's one of so hard strengths. No. Let's just say she's got away with it. She has survived that clearance. Well, that was a good chance, I thought. That wasn't a difficult clearance. She hit the wrong side of it, I thought. Oh, I just don't like that. It's just such an opportunity to rush peel or that to happen. Um, I preferred clearing with yellow in that instance. But I think that's just sort of one of my weaknesses of clearing balls that are horribly close to hoops. Now, she's got the clearance, but she's absolutely lost black. Yeah, and yellow will play neutrally between two and the boundary, I think, or deep, deep and runnable. But between between blue and the boundaries, I like that. That's just that allows red to play back in, takes the short boundary side. That's where I want yellow. Yeah, deep and runnable is just inviting blue to pop itself an inch in front of the hoop. Uh, lots of the viewers at home will think, well, that's not achieving anything. Yellow can't run the hoop but it controls that entire area of the lawn. Yeah, where's um, blue going? Rachel could try and go wide from it, the opposite side of the hoop. Or the more natural line is you quarter ball it so both ball, balls go off the lawn. Ah, you were saying that that ball was actually a foot back from the hoop. So plenty of room to clear it. I think he's referring to that ball, I might have misinterpreted that. So yeah. Yeah, I, I really fancied that as get off the lawn, right. It's okay, it's finished north. Um, yeah, these positions are interesting because a lot of people get used to the idea of just centre balling a ball away and going, I've played a good shot here. But just leaving blue in front of yellow so it can smash it somewhere is, is not strong. So yeah. normally getting off the lawn. Um, there's a request for the score to be updated. The score's currently 1 0 to um, Soha Mustafa. That wind keeps blowing the zero back and forward, doesn't it? Ah, right. So, yeah, the live scoreboard's having a few issues as well. It does need someone to be keeping a bit of control. I think it was 8-5 at one point with the score, wasn't it? And quite right. First ball gets a chance of clearing. And then there's a lot of pressure on blue at red if you hit this right. And yellow goes over to hoop three. Yeah, if blue misses red, then red gets a chance at the hoop and blue's offside. <laughs> Lovely shot in the middle. Now we're seeing the real Soha come out. I, I don't feel like we've seen her play like this. I haven't seen a huge amount of her play, but I don't feel I've seen this this week. No, I don't think she's been on form. Um, and I'm hoping to see more out of Rachel. It's not been a strong match. And she'd done enough to beat Soha playing poorly in the first two. Uh, but that standard play needs to lift. Yeah, I, I do think though, if Rachel just gets a little bit of something going, if she wins hoop three and hoop four and clears at hoop five, just does something, then this whole momentum could... could um, easily change. Could easily change. So Ewan was asking why Rachel took position with black there. Sorry, I've seen this comment a bit late, so all the balls have moved. Um, simply turning it into a seven yard battle. And to me, if this matches who hits the most seven yarders as a percentage, Rachel should win that all the time. It's so, normally Rachel, yes. Uh, Soha might clear them further away, but Soha's going to miss more. And uh, what I've found this match is I've already seen about six or seven, seven yarders missed by Rachel. And, you know, she's normally going to hit 19 out of 20 or something at that range. Yeah, it's just some days you can just have a day where your swing's off a bit and things don't work. But, yeah, as I say, if she just gets something to go her way, things could come back. So, um, the blue is on side. The black... No, 
I've got that wrong way around. The black, black is, is on side, the blue is off side. So it'd be quite an easy positional shot at three if Rachel were to lose hoop two here. So Har will be saying, but I'm two nil up, so that's all good. Yeah. Yeah, that's two nil. I thought Sohar came up a wee bit on that shot. As she often does. Right. And one of the power generating me mechanisms is that back going from almost horizontal to flicked up very quickly. And um, uh, let's hope she doesn't have the same back problems that I I've got in my uh, midlife um, with that big movement in your back to generate power. Well, if you look at her top hand, um, you'll see there's a wrist support on it, and she has that wrist incredibly flexed. There's a lot of stress going through her wrist just with every shot she plays. A good positional shot from Rachel, from an easy positional place. So hard looking to take position, but then going... No, she's Rachel changed her mind. Couple. She's having two goes, and I think this is the right choice. Yeah, black is so good. And yellow is closer than red. Yeah. So, yeah, multiple reasons to decide to have a pop at this. Oh, oh dear. And we weren't seeing this at the start of the match, were we? And we've just had a series of really quite strong shots. Three long clearances hit strongly, pretty much dead in the middle. Quite uh, difficult to play so hard when she's playing in this mode. And it, it's not just hit it, it's hit it on the correct side. Yeah. So it yeah, takes sure. that north boundary area. Rachel thinks she's under hit this, and she's right. That's only level with the hoop. So, if so hard gets good position here, I'm guessing it'll be yellow hard at blue. Will so hard be that aggressive? It's a good question, that Jenny. I don't think we're going to find out because that is a deliberate decision to go very deep, yeah. and um, she's just biding her time. It's nice seeing this someone actually crafting the hoop rather than being in a rush to score that point. Yeah, that's a nice close position. Good shot from Rachel, this is just coming in. And so what we're seeing here is so hard just going, I'm going to take control of that near side boundary, isn't it? Yeah, I think Rachel will clear yellow and red will be left to the hoop shot. And red will take it, do you think? Oh, I think red will take it. Because that is black in the jaws of the hoop if it misses. Yeah, so this next shot is huge in match terms. A 3 0 lead is going to create a big challenge for Rachel. Yeah. I think she's lost eight of the last nine points. Right. I don't. I think blue's probably far enough back that it's not in, not any concern with black as well. So if this doesn't run, I do expect to see black in the jaws. Depending if this hits the wire and where it ends up. But yeah, huge opportunity for Soha now. There we go. So the door opens for Rachel. So just outside the centre of the near wire, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm a little bit worried, given that Red has bounced back to jumping position, yeah. that if Rachel goes for the jaws, yellow can clear blue and red will be left with a jump shot. Yeah, and yellow's already warming up for that shot. So I think she might just decide to run this. Yeah. It's quite angled though, isn't it? It's not easy, no. And blue is in play, isn't it, there? Oh dear. So I think I, I, I'm just going to go and have a look and see whether red can creep past that if yellow hammers blue away. Great, right, thank you. Yeah, it does look like black could be overlapping the hoop. 
so yeah it's just when you've got a ball in your back swing or just interfering with your feet a bit it's just that extra couple of percentage of difficulty there Let's see if Soha can keep the shooting streak up So Reg is completely open on the hoop. I did think there if Soha missed this we could see that momentum swing back but she's absolutely clubbed that ball. Blue force to shoot at Red here. Yep. This will be Soha going very hard at the hoop if Blue misses Red. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost tempted to say there is a, a very small percentage chance that you can miss the hoop on the left, flick the edge of black, and still go through. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you really need to hit this. Nice smooth shot. This time. I mean, so how will often do this if she's failed a hoop or bounced out, she will ask for the hoop to be banged down to make sure it's absolutely firm for the next go. And I guess she did hit it pretty hard with that previous attempt. failed and bounced back to hamper anything black can do easily I think. It's interesting isn't it? Black may end up just stopping red away here. Even that's not very easy with the hoop away. Um, it will want to get in the jaws but this looks tricky. It's quite an acute angle. No that's no good is it? Well she'll still need to clear blue. Big, big let off for Rachel though. Two, two. The first one was difficult, wasn't it? That one was a straightforward hoop. Yep, dead straight hoop. Um, and she played it at a pace that if it got a bit of wire, it would run it all the way down to hoop four as well. That would have been off south boundary, wouldn't it? If it didn't have much wire, yeah, I was I was just thinking it was a nice pace to give yourself that opportunity to catch a bit of wire, but... Is she shooting at this? Very surprised at this. I just like taking position. And Rachel's missed quite a few shots as well. Yeah, I, I also want to take position here, Jenny. And there's no way Rachel can rush, white, rush red wide from black. I guess she's, she's hit so many shots, she's just going, this is what I can do. Not this time. I definitely think position was the right play there. She's got that south of hoop too as well. So it should be fully open, it's fully open on black. Fully open, yeah. yep. But yeah, now it's so hard even to do something clever to, to well, stay away from an equalising hoop, hoop run, I think. Because it will be running three all the way down to hoop four. So Rachel will have a lot of control over four. Big shot, this. That was the 
left hand coming through that I've been mentioning. As soon as that left hand comes through, she tends to miss on the right. You want both forearm, forearms extending. Yeah, I think she looked up a bit at it, a little bit quicker as well, maybe. Uh, one of the beauties of the sport, isn't it? We, we were looking at 3-0, and um, now it could easily be 2-all very quickly. Yeah, and then we've got that short transitional hoop. And Rachel's had the advantage throughout the match, playing 4-5. She's done better. Yep, she just needs to take a deep breath and go, well, we're well back in this. How are we going to craft this win? Mm, got a lot more wire than she would have wanted there. Could have yeah. done with another three or four yards out of that black. I suspect she had quite an angle there looking at the way she's played that. This looks good pace. Thanks for your comments, David Gow. Lovely, lovely shot. Beautiful shot. That's what she did when she won last time. Kept putting balls right in front from distance. Lovely shot from lovely Rachel in reply. And Black's only got about a seven yarder on yellow. Well, that's what we found from looking at Andy Cowan's analysis of golf croquet. Is good positional shots just win. It's great to have the long clearances but your bread and butter is getting good position. That's gone I think. So not in front. So hopeful bravo for the crowd trying to encourage so hard on. You want to hit this on the left hand side cutting it wide from blue. Second prize, cleared it without clearing it into blue. Just putting some pressure back on so far, I mean, a uh, bit more doubt in her mind about things. And once again, this is a different shot. If red's in front, you're thinking this is a clearance to corner two to win the hoop. Yep. Now, it's to keep in the hoop. So yeah, you want to put more control over this clearance rather than just being able to absolutely smash it. But the Egyptians do smash these, don't they? Very often. Yeah, I think we'll see this as a firm clearance. Yeah, I mean, the thing I was going to say about that is we, we normally say if you're going into the lawn, you play mid pace there. Yeah. But because red had control of the hoop area, yellow is going to have the tempo to come back into the hoop. So red can control the area here, it can immediately clear the blue ball. Well, yeah, and let's not just give blue an easy, easy place to choose where it takes position. Yeah, you know, she's had to come in from quite some distance. So I expect half ball on the left here. And she's opted for the right. That gives her the longer clearance by hitting it on the right. The left gave her more of a positional in front of the hoop. I think lots of people will be looking at that going, well, why wasn't a central clearance staying in front of the hoop? And simply you don't want black to take position and then blue have a smash yeah. pointing west, getting to hoop five. Yeah, Blue's got a short smash, it's on the short boundary and could run on to hoop 5. So we're going to enter this 7 yard clearing phase again. Um, yellow's going to take position at the hoop. Blue's going to try and clear yellow. Red's going to try and clear black. And these will be firm clearances. It's gone a long way north there. Good length. Length's good. Didn't want to interfere with Red's clearance on black. Yeah, and the last thing you want is black to just centre ball onto yellow. Or to obviously to block yourself. And also, when blue clears this, it's not going to stay in front. Will, will blue clear it? No. I would. 
two one down I'm looking at that, that as a, an opportunity. Yeah, it's just yellow's far enough back that she's just rolled in trying to get between yellow and the two. Cleverly there has turned the clearing battle back on Soha and make Soha have the slightly longer and more pressured clearances. What's she going to do here? Will she clear or will she do what she did with blue and just come back? She'll clear yellow. <coughs> this is what what I call a free clearance. So if you miss, yellow's going to take the hoop on. Yep. If you hit, yellow can't take the hoop on. If you miss, you put a little bit of doubt in the mind in terms of yellow could clear blue yes and then just give you another chance to clear beautiful central clearance there too and now due to the position of red which is almost near corner two um yellow needs to clear this mid -piece. this can't go hard yeah yellow's got to stay near the hoop you know, rachel's done well here to get control of this hoop Oh, yeah, she's just hit 14 yards, hasn't she? I mean, <laughs> yeah. but even just that ball that played in there rather than trying to clear something that wasn't, yeah, that was a wee bit back from the hoop. That was full pace, yeah, and the only reason it's good is it hit absolutely the dead middle of it. Three quarter ball wouldn't have been any good at that pace. Three quarter ball it would have possibly been off the boundary itself. As it was, a superb shot. And possibly necessary given that she's hit the middle of it because otherwise you know black could actually look to clear yellow if it was much closer. That's a ten that blue. That is absolutely super from that distance. Yep. Yep, line and length is perfect. This is also quite an impressive ball. Unless it blocks yellow, that's lovely. That's superb from that range. And if anything deserved a brav, <laughs> that did. Didn't get much either. So yeah, now Soha's got a relatively short clearance, but it's clearing blue to the short boundary. So we're back to this sort of eight to seven or eight yard shooting battle. Which favours Rachel here. Um, blue can only be cleared seven yards, red can be cleared a lot further, with yes. blue potentially moving towards hoop five. Will she have the courage to go half ball left on this? I don't think so. Unlucky, but that was always on. And I don't think Rachel will play the hard shot blue at red. There's not really any need to now, is there? Um, well, there is, because red and yellow are actually perfectly strong balls. Um, so not doing, the only thing you can do is play between red and black. Yeah. And then that's, if you miss it, potentially giving yellow a very easy stop shot clearance. So. You know, this isn't a great position for black and blue anymore. Yeah, but both the places that she's got, that Rachel's got her balls, clearing these will not leave so high in front of the hoop. No. Now she's lost the red behind the hoop. 
Rachel immediately going and looking at the wired spot. Um, position for Soha here. I think she'll be hoping for potentially an opportunity to clear black trying to get in the way of blue. Yeah, I think she's also potentially going to end up looking at jaws and yellow. Yeah. yeah I mean, Rachel's good at this distance, but again, it is one of those turning hoops that you desperately don't want to rush purely off by. Another great length shot. Is she open on the hoop? Not sure. I do like seeing when people can turn around the shooting battle and, and take a good positional shot instead. Really good yellow. So yellow perfectly blocking blue? Perfectly blocking blue and black probably blocking blue at yellow. Right. Will she take a jump on here because you're much less likely to rush peel a ball that's a foot in front of the hoop. Oh. I'm interested in cutting black behind yellow so red can't clear it. Right. That's a new sort of neutral shot. The aggressive shot is just the full out jump. But you're in all sorts of trouble potentially if you miss this. If you got this rush of black behind yellow, would you have a go at the in off? Yes, I think I would. That's unusual. Yeah, Rachel's got lovely control and power. Um, you wouldn't expect to see her miss the hoop. And here we go. This is full power, isn't it? Because this is a range that Rachel will run the hoop, no matter whether yellow's in the way or not. And again, the two options, you can just play a neutral nudge, but this is an easy jump. You've got oh, to take the jump on. Got to take the jump. Particularly, I think, with red having been lost. We're not sure it's necessarily a jump. I think it is. Okay. It does look like a lovely yellow, but... Yeah, it's a bad red for hoop five. Yeah, well done. Back to two all. Finally hearing from the crowd as well. Two games all, two hoops all, yellow to play to hoop five. And black with a re relatively short clearance on yellow. Yeah. And red won't be able to clear blue. It's too far away. Yeah, you'd only really use red to clear blue if it was going to be closer than the yellow at blue shot after. Yellow was smashed away, wouldn't you? Yeah. Looks good length. That's good. It's a good shot. Black shouldn't have any chance of clearing blue if it hits yellow. You're definitely not clearing blue now. It's gone too far, is it? Too far. Here we go. She's been winning these four to five transitions. This is the one you really want. In the middle. <coughs> yep, and some of the um, crowd watching the streaming have been pointing out that yellow was a bit the wrong side of the hoop. It should have been to the west of the hoop. And Absolutely, we, yeah. Rachel nearly got the full benefit of that, having quite a lot of the wire was black on its way through. Massive shot, this one. Oh, 
absolutely in the middle again. And now is she getting punished for this imperfect red? Yeah. That was so important. Yeah, she's she's two nil up, she's now two all. It's shaking her head, and the reason she's shaking her head is she knows if she'd have played a decent shot with red, she'd be in all sorts of great position now. As it is, Rachel's not even bothering shooting at her. It's runnable. Oh, it's a bad ball from Rachel, I think. Uh, so I was not even going to look at this hoop. This is going to be a straightforward clearance on blue. I hate that blue. I want red to take the hoop on. Yeah, it's just gifted that clearance. And I'm going to clear red centre ball here. Yep. Trouble is, even clearing red centre ball, black will run on a bit. Red is going to be all over black for that next rotation. Probably got a wee bit more of a westward clearance actually. I thought it was looking a bit more south. No, she does hit it in the middle, it's not so bad. Yeah, I mean anything in the middle or on the right hand side works here. That's not good. That's the wrong side. So advantage Soha. Can Soha get in front of hoop five then? Got quite a nice angle coming in from around about hoop four. Yep, she's got two shots at it, but if she doesn't get in front of hoop five now, then Blue's going to play back in. I think whatever she does, Blue's going to play back in, unless it's wired from yeah. black. Yeah, she didn't really look at that wire. Oh, that's a good shot there. Just gone a fraction far again. I'm always looking for the, the perfect position, dead straight there, so I'm threatening to run it down to six. I really fancied her going and looking to see if she could hide behind that wire of hoop four as well. If, if she could get a really nice close runnable position. Correct. Put, put four in the way of black. You, you want to force blue to shoot. Um, and the only way to force blue to shoot is to be wired from black. This looks good. <laughs> Red will just play in here. Yeah, I mean, if you go to clear that, you've got risks of smashing yellow away. Try and get the block on black. So quite tight to the hoop. Bit short. Mm, doesn't really achieve a lot, that ball. Nah, to me it's a bit of a nothing ball. Um, if yellow's cleared three or four yards away, red will look a lot better. Yellow's cleared to the boundary, red will look like it's short. Super shot again. Hopefully viewers are enjoying this because this is the sort of standard you'd hope for in a final. Um, yep. That's sort of what I predicted this might be at the start of the event. Um, but lovely quality clearing at hoop five. She's improved the red ball. <laughs> so, Chris, I know that for quite some years the seeding committee hasn't really been used. Uh, yeah, it's been many years since we've used the seeding committee in the um, in the golf croquet. Yeah, wouldn't it have been wonderful to do that? Well, perhaps the answer to that will come tomorrow after the final. Um, you know, Jamie's played really, really well. Oh yeah, um, no disrespect to Jamie, I think Jamie could well be the winner of this event. And um, I'm going to hold my hand up and said uh, if I'd have seeded the event, Jamie would not have been one of the top four seats. So um, I've got that wrong. Yep. Um, but um, 
one of the problems with seeding committees is you need to have such a depth of knowledge of the players and you need players from all the countries around the world um, you almost need to get the Egyptians to seed their own players, which I think you've done in the past, haven't you? It's yeah. Sort of a subset of the seeding committee. Yeah. But yeah, but then you've got Jamie, who we've only seen in Australia normally. But let's just enjoy this Hoop 5 battle, because this is an absolute joy. Red won't take what we call normal position there. It will go three or four yards deep. It's actually gone a yard or two closer than I expected. I expect that to be deeper. Yeah, that can just be smashed into corner four now. Yeah. Um, I think that needs to be two yards further south. You're um, really trying to protect from black, blue putting that into the fourth corner. Yeah, short, 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 Ooh, short. Right that is criminal. And Rachel yeah. can't believe she's done it. So all that advantage that blue had. Yeah, all the work she'd done there. And she's obviously well, still well in this, but um, it was really disappointing. But yeah, Ewan's right, Rachel does appear to have found her swing again. They're both good players under pressure. I think Rachel particularly knows how to deal with it. Um, and delightful to see them both peaking at the right time. Yeah. Oh, this is just a fabulous match. This is what we've been wanting to see. Again, go nice and tight here. Don't let black have a double clearance, but you want red really tight. Black's got the chance to stop yellow away and potentially finish in runnable position. Which it has done. Blue is open on red. Yeah, Rachel's got herself back in a very strong position here. A couple of central clearances have got her back. I don't like blue at yellow, it's too aggressive. I want yellow nice and tight into the hoop, potentially blocking black at the hoop. Yep, she's on her way back in. Yeah, blue's so far away from the hoop. This is short. Oh, I wanted that. Um, I wanted that much tighter into the hoop. She might have actually got the block, but. Can red see that hoop. Yeah, I think red's open. I'm not sure black's open anymore, so it has potentially achieved the target. Um, I would have just gone another sort of two two feet tighter into the hoop, not giving black a stop shot clearance. Yeah, I can't see blue taking this hoop on. She can continue this clearing battle, I think. Got both red. So unlucky. Nice clearance on both of them, but yeah, very unlucky sticking red there. So I mentioned we hadn't had a lot of luck this match. That's a massive swing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's just really, really unfortunate. So do you feel that Rachel's quickened her pace of play? I do. I do. I think she's very slightly faster. Good That's shot. a good shot from Soha. 3-2 lead to Soha, final game, semi-final, 2023 Women's GC Worlds. This looks good. Great shot. That's a really good shot. Red can still clear it, so yellow just needs to make sure it's in position, not blocking the red at black. That is perfect. And I think blue might have to shoot at something. Yep. It's got a perfect double, hoop and yellow. Well, Are you going to be tempted? Target. She hasn't looked at it. Well, black's so good yeah. that she'll be thinking, well, red's shorter. And if I can hit this to the north boundary, I'm going to have a very short straight hoop with black. Which would be grateful for after that disaster earlier. 
That wasn't hit very hard. I thought I thought that was probably 50% under hit. Yeah, you just want to get black, or, uh, yellow, sorry, red off the lawn. Black's in a lovely position. You want to maximise that distance there. Yeah, and having done all those big 14-yard clearances at five, you'd have thought quite. Oh, it's not in front. Ah, oh, that explains the pace of the shot then. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I thought after all the round of applause from the crowd on the far side, that it must be really good. See, the TV crowd's got a much better view than us. <coughs> yeah, good control. Blue's open on red from where we are. So yellow will try and play in between blue and the red. I still... I know blue's got this smash, but I still rather be red and yellow here. Absolutely, yeah. Blue's got to hit the smash in the middle. Oh, short. it's short. No, that's, that's, that's no good at all. You're starting to fancy blue and black a bit more on the suit now. Yeah, that was a poor shot. It's probably two and a half yards out. At least, yeah. Lives to fight another day, that's black off the south boundary, I think. No, this is running the hoop. Well, she's got a free shot in the hoop, is she? Oh, I don't like this. Not with blue there. You also have to get black where it's got nothing on the hoop. It's got to be completely blocked on the hoop here. So I think she might have a go at it. I don't think she will. I think she'll think blue's in control. Blue's got an extra shot. Black plays back in. There's some suggestion that Rachel may have beveled that, hoop, that shot with the blue ball. No, I don't think so. Um, I thought she came right over it with her right wrist. Okay. and just hoiked it into the left hand wire okay. as we look at it, right hand wire is who she looks at it. but that's the right choice of shot playing back in well yeah yellow's so bad isn't it so um, once again so has being punished for a weak positional shot now I can cope with the yellow taking black out if it wants to yeah it gives red a go at the hoop more of a puff of breeze there I think I'd have restored that I think in general there have been too many hoops turned down allowing the opponents extra 10 yarders to get back into the hoop. Ah right, no it was so hard to be able to a positional shot that it was that yellow that was so short. Ah, well, that's possible, I wasn't right, fully watching that. that so yeah, that could easily be true. And Rachel's under hit again. I watch a lot of professional tour golf and when people are getting near the winning line and they've got a two stroke lead with six holes to go, eight holes to go, all of their putts start coming up short. So is Rachel just feeling a little bit of pressure? Or is Rachel just feeling a bit of fatigue as well? Possibly, possibly. So are quite rightly just nudging red in front. Yellow's got an easy clearance on blue, moving yellow towards hoop seven. I thought and she also had the opportunity to take on a hoop if she wanted though. Yeah. Because yellow had the clearance on blue. Rachel won't want to leave this red in front. Right. She's going to try and take it out immediately rather than allow Sohar to clear blue with yellow. It's good to see Rachel resetting. If you get a bit distracted, just starting freshly, going through your pre shot routine again. Oh, I thought that looked good. I thought she had that. Nice pace and swing. So, is Soha going to try and get to hoop seven here, or will she try and hang around hoop six? I think she'll try and get to seven.
Oh, it's beautiful. That is a super yellow. It's runnable from there. Yeah. It is a very powerful thing to do, but you still want to make sure of getting that 4 2 lead. Unless Rachel hits this absolutely in the middle, Soha will still be favourite for the hoop. Yeah, you're right. And she doesn't hit this, she's miles out of position. Black's offside. Yeah, she potentially will have two east boundary balls, won't she, if she misses this. Oh, she's got it! That's great! Now, I like to swing there too. It hasn't moved it far, so she's still probably going to lose six. But at least black and blue are back in business now. Yeah. And blue's going to end up with a potential clearance at red, with black in front of the hoop. Yes. I'd expect to see black just take position here. That's a much oh better positional shot. Ooh. Much no, better. Okay. A bit worried it might have travelled on a bit past, but no, blue's well open on red. Blue's got a tiny fraction of a percentage for an in off there in red as well. Not sure it has. Don't be short. Don't be short. Oh dear, oh dear, 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 dear. That ball needs to be up threatening to block black or cuddle black or be in front of the hoop or do something you can't be short so now rachel has a chance to swing things on its head from merely two minutes ago there's a re wee risk of a double clearance yellow's not in front anyway That was the risk of, of playing yellow up to hoop seven, is that if you got cleared then things might become a bit more awkward, you've got to take position from further away, but it was a super shot. Now we've got blue offside. At least the first positional ball is in a much better place. Yes. And yellow isn't onside by the hoop. Yes. So, although she's 4-2 down still, the actual tactical positional side of the game is much better. That is... Mm, I think it might be short again, that. It might be jawsing, it might not even be jawsing. I'm sure lots of our viewers will once again say, if you're going to be missing you're missing by two feet long there at least red's angle is more difficult to clear it a long way away yeah and you can just keep a bit more control over things um, it would be very interesting to see how the play goes in the next few shots here just to give you an idea of where black actually is i mean does red need to clear black Ian tells us it's about 75 degrees, so that's black possibly not even jawsing. She's not worrying about moving it. That's good, two balls in front. And is it blocking black on yellow? I don't think so. Um, the, na the natural play is to nudge in front here. You have to really, you can't rush yellow to the north boundary because um, that will be all over blue then. So yellow nudges it up to blue. Red jumps. Yellow jumps. Or yellow jumps straight away. This is long. Well the nudge up to blue is not an easy shot from that distance. And if you get it wrong then you've got nothing. Because blue will rush uh, red all the way to the southern bit of the east boundary. Yeah, one of the things you can do, providing you get the height and the ball hits the hoop first, is it can come down and nudge black back away from the hoop. Yes. Um, but you do need to get up in the air. We do think this is jumping, don't we? Yes. The clips, the clips come off. Yeah. 
and she had the hoop checked for firmness. Oh, there we go. Egyptians go bonkers. It's a 5-2 lead. It's a really good shot. Yeah, and she's going to have to play black through the hoop to get down there, which gives you a lack of control. Great shot from Rachel. Don't think red can hit yellow, can it? I don't think so, no. I don't think you can promote yellow down. So perhaps you want to play this um, south of hoop eight, just in case blue draws us. Yeah. Well, at least play it at a, at a pace to reach hoop eight, I think. Yeah. I think yellow's going to go hard here. I think yellow's got a double. Ball and hoop. If you've got a bit of a gap between them, what are you going for? You must be going for the ball here, eh? And well, you know me, I go for the one on the left. So I'm going for the hoop. <laughs> yep. On the basis that I miss on the right and I might get the ball. Um, if you're asking me if I was in a neutral position, I'll go for the ball here. Red's nice and close to the hoop. I'm still well in win it. I've got a 5-2 lead. I'll go for the ball, I think. We might be going for the glory shot here. Um, so there's a foot between blue and the hoop. This is a conscious choice to go for the hoop. I can't. What, do you know what side Sohan's misses on normally? No. Um, I would say because she comes over it with a bottom hand and she's left-handed, that would mean her miss would be on the right. Okay. Which suggests she should be going for the hoop here. Yeah. Big, big moment. It's a very long hoop, but if she gets this, huge. It's close. Oh, it's got the ball. So, apologises there. We did mention that the miss was on the right. Yep. She obviously knows that herself. She's taken the hoop on. She's been lucky. She's acknowledged it. And to be honest, this hasn't been the luckiest 20 minutes for Rachel, has it? No. No, if you're going to have all your bad luck, it's just not great to have it in the deciding game. <laughs> so, such an even match. 7-5, seven, 7-4 seven, to Rachel, the first two. 7-5, seven, 7-4 seven, to Soha, the third and fourth games. <coughs> but great to see both the players playing so well in the decider. This is what we wanted to see. And that's under hit. Blue's open on the hoop, and I'm not sure how easy red's hoop is. Yeah, you can see so how very unhappy with that. Is she going for a free guard the hoop? Yeah. Looks like she's clearing red to me. Yeah, the shot. There we go. A little bit of a luck back. Again, gets the in off through hoop eight to go five three down. Six two or five three is a massive difference. Massive amount of climbing for six two down. I think she's nailed this one. Yeah, that, that's good. May have rolled a little bit past. I don't know, but looks like a really good shot. Yeah. It's probably, I think, two balls past dead straight. Is that worth two goes? At 5-3 down, I'm having two goes at that. Yeah, Rachel lining up. Looks about 15 degrees. I can't turn two shots down here, 5-3 down. Well, no, and also given the position she's in, 
you can very much see Soha running that up to the next hoop and then you know, you're in absolutely end of game territory. I can also see red playing into position on a very good blocking line for black at yellow. Yeah, blue's just played in. Um, so let's Don't see like how... This. No. But let's red play in. The key thing is even if red doesn't get the block, if you clear yellow, yellow's all over blue. Oh, that's very short. It's very close to the block as well, Jenny. It's a deliberate attempt to block. Aren't looking at it's open, isn't it? Okay, so you've got a 90% of this to shoot at. Got, got it. Lovely. As soon as that went past red, it was hitting yellow, wasn't it? Super shot. Reds just. How bad that red shot is is really going to be shown up now. And is this another position do you think where Soha has to go at sort of firm medium pace rather than all out smash because of where red is? I, I'm erring up. I'm really, this is getting me on close to 50 50 decision as to whether I clear blue or take position 5 3 up. Okay. It's a long hoop. The odds of blue running it all the way to 10 aren't high. And yet, I feel at this stage I need to be clearing it as well. So this is close to 50-50 on my decision making. I'm probably going to clear it. You need to be able to keep feeling like you are clearing, that you are playing well and you're hitting well, I think. Yeah, and I think on, you asked me, is it a mid pace or a hard one? And on the same principle we discussed a little while ago, because red's controlling the area, I'm actually going to go hard at that. Right. Um, and I think we'll see blue play deepish. Yes. So blue playing deep is kind of admitting that blue might not have a chance of running the hoop, but it's keeping control of anything else that goes near the hoop. Yeah, it's a good place there. Blue can run the hoop from there, but it's controlling a whole nice area in front of the hoop. Soha's option to play a foot straight in front of the hoop, which might have been tempting if she'd have gone a bit straighter, is probably much less attractive now. And we may simply see a neutral clearance on blue. Smashing them both off to boundary. Yeah. Now, I think that's what she's chosen to do. I think it's a good choice. Is red going north or south of blue? I'm going to try and go south. Slightly more difficult shot, but gives you benefits in the clearing battle that follows. No, yeah. no, 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 no. So for many people that will look like a fantastic central wall clearance and we're saying no because blue can now have complete control over the red. Meaning that when black takes position, yellow has to shoot at black. Yeah, I mean blue can choose to clear red to the opposite side of the lawn, it can choose to smuggle to red. That was the one that we were talking about before, saying that if you hit it dead in the middle and your ball stays on the lawn, not a good outcome. Good shot from Rachel. I'm amazed by this choice of shot. I don't agree with this choice. That was only about a 12 yarder. Yeah, yeah. to I, take the short boundary as well. I have to clear that. That is a compulsory clearance. Anyway, let's see what Rachel does with this. It's only a three yarder, isn't it? Yeah. This is a three yarder to the west boundary. No, she's hit it on the wrong side. You got wanted middle or just on the left. She's got the wire. But she has got the wire. Yeah, I'm, I'm just disappointed with this play. Well, Rachel's was possibly a deliberate play. This beautiful position that she's rushed it to. And she had a big wide, wide area. Although she didn't come to look at it. No, she she'll be tr trying to hit that in the middle, I'm confident. Right. Uh, perhaps knowing that hitting it on the just off centre on the left is good. And hitting it there also works. This is, you know, why we're disappointed with this choice of the shot with yellow. 
either this wide spot or having a 20 yard to come back and have to hit. So from a very, very strong position, Rachel's winning this transition around the corner again. Trying to nudge yellow towards black. Okay, so all about distance control now. Yep, Rachel's well back in this match now. Can she make it five all? About to be five all. A bit short, it's got to the northern half of the lawn, and it's certainly good enough to control the area in front of ten, but not to run it directly. And it forces so hard to really try and get very tight onto the hoop. She's wisely gone to the right hand side of black to take control of the short boundary. But for me that's a yard short at least. I wanted to see her go very tight to the hoop and really put the pressure on black for the clearance. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think blue is also a yard short as well. Yeah. Yeah, they, these ladies both left a lot of space up by the hoop. This red's looking better. This is better. Where's it finishing? Oh, it's just drifted left. We've seen that drift left, haven't we? Approaching yeah. hoop 10. Yeah, when we first came on here, we saw a shot that did that. And now this is very tactical. Options to play in. I like a straightforward black clearing yellow blue runs a hoop. Yep. Well, black clearing yellow on the correct side puts black in an interesting spot too. Gets it on its way to the next hoop. I think it should be going for a dead central clearance. Assuming yellow gets cleared, I think yellow's going to play back in and not shoot at blue. Okay. And allow blue to take the hoop on. That makes playing in more difficult because the angle is across the blocking line. Yes. So there's more reason to take blue out. But 5-4 up, keeping your balls in a good position for 11, really important, forcing the opponent to beat you. Yes, but giving Rachel a fairly straightforward hoop there, I think she'd be grateful to have the chance at yeah. the 5 all. If she fails the hoop and doesn't finish in the jaws, she's almost certainly going 6-4 down. Yep. That's the beauty of yellow. Oh, she oh. got the block. She did get, she must have had the block. Yeah, yeah. no, you're actually would have taken the hoop on. That is a superb block from 90 degree position. And people think it's all about smashing and hitting it straight, but that was almost changing a losing hoop to a winning hoop by a blocking play. Yeah. We might see a smashing the position here. Yeah, just wants to be wired from black with red. Yeah. And then yellow can clear blue. Yellow hits the middle of blue, yellow's over at hoop 11 as well. And if black swards from red, black needs to hit blue in the middle. Move it five or six yards. Yeah, good call. Yeah, she's in a wee bit of trouble here. Oh dear, oh dear. I think what we're going to see here is going to end up being a clearance of blue. No, I, I'm not convinced. I'm sorry, I mean blue clearing red and potentially black going for the hoop. Clearance of blue on red. Ah, okay. Because I thought yellow was going to play in as well, but she isn't. I thought yellow was going to play in, yeah. And right, yeah. It's, it's so hard to move it out of a hole, and Rachel's yeah. saying, can you move it backwards rather than forwards? I think that's what's happened here. So so hard just moved it half an inch backwards instead of forwards. Yeah. Um, and this is the very aggressive choice of shot. Um, I think Chris would be taking position with yellow here, wouldn't he? I like position with yellow, I do. If I was 5-4 down, I would take this shot every single time. 
Yeah. But five four up position with yellow is the most likely way to get a six four lead. Good shot, though. It's a good shot. Ye yellow is nowhere. Black's offside, actually, isn't it? Black's definitely offside, yeah. Yellow's nowhere, so she hasn't got the dead central clearance, but she's got a lovely long clearance. Yeah, there's distance here. That's but a good, what, 16, 17 yards, this? Yeah, but if Rachel hits this, she's well back in things. Yeah, this will move it very much to a neutral position. Any sort of hit that moves Red out of running position. I think this is a strength of Rachel's. It's something that she does step up to rather than feeling the pressure in these positions. Right, well. One of the interesting questions here, given the control Soha has, is should she run it by one or two yards to shorten her clearance at yep. 11? I tried to do that earlier this week and ran it by one or two millimetres. A bit frustrating. I think she's going through the boundary here. I agree. Oh! <laughs> well, she certainly tried to and took a lot of wire, and that is now quite a short clearance. She's got a top outcome there. And she's sending Black to the penalty spot. And Rachel hadn't realised it was offside, so... <coughs> so Black offside, Yellow, she just needs to hit Yellow hard enough when she takes position with Yellow. Yep. She's going to be able to come on a nice line. Make sure you don't finish on the wire of hoop six. But let's see if Rachel can get position. You can um, see the excitement that Sohar's starting to feel. That's good position. It's not great for running to 12, but it's in front. And it's on the opposite side to red. Yeah, it's length so. of red shot by a couple of yards. This is good length. Pass good line, that's good. Bravo. Can red hit yep, black? Yep, definitely. That's a good shot from yellow. And she'll take the shot at black on, will she? She will. Blue tries to block it and hasn't got it. And now red at black. Really enjoyed this final game. It's been, it's been good quality stuff, hasn't it? Oh, it's been really exciting, yeah. Nope. Uh, Black will stun yellow away and will eventually be trying to run the hoop from much closer than either Black or Blue are at the moment. Yeah. With control down to 12. I think you've got the line here to put yellow quite, uh, sorry, Black quite close to the hoop with this clearance. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, oh, lovely shot. shot. Has she got far enough over that this, this black is easy to run the hoop to hoop 12? Yes, I think so. Soha gives up with yellow. The Egyptians applaud the choice. Likely to give up with red as well then, isn't she? It's interesting. Um, the shot from Rachel indicates that... Black is plum in front. I'm just wondering whether Rachel is going to run this. Yeah, she's put blue in an awful position as she runs the hoop. 
Lose, lose to the side. It's. I, she is running it. Okay. I thought she might do something more positive with the blue, 6-4 down. You know, I thought, given that Soha seemed to have given up on the hoop, that Rachel might go halfway. That's past the hoop. Oh, it's... Oh, oh dear. Unlucky. That is really unlucky. <laughs> she has had a tough run of the luck in this match. So, Soha finding a spot that's wired from blue. Well, she's having a look to see if Blue can see the hoop as well. You yeah, cer uh, certainly doesn't want to offer a double. Yeah. She wants really good position with this because Red will be clearing black here. Well, that's not wired from Blue. Therefore, it, it might be a double. Indeed. But maybe lock them a block in the hoop but it may just be a double. Do you think Blue's just going to play down here then? Uh, if Blue has any sort of target, Blue's shooting. Right. Red's all over this black ball. Oh absolutely, yeah. Black is being cleared. Wow, she's looking at clearing red. It's legitimate play. If you haven't got a double, Clearing red allows you to play your way back into a hoop. Yeah, I mean, she may not have been looking at clearing red. She might have just been contemplating red's options while facing it. But no, I think it's a legitimate choice. If you've got no shot other than clearing yellow with no hoop in the background, clearing red does give you some play to get back in. Well, do you then go to the hoop with black? No, the, the clearing red is about clearing multiple mid mid ranges. Okay. Um, I think. Personally, I'm going to take position. Boring as it sounds. <laughs> you are a position man. <laughs> and uh, allow either blue to creep up, stymieing yellow or blocking yellow from the hoop. Um, or just simply getting in front, getting cleared by red and then hitting my 14, 15, 16 yarder. Um, oh dear. Yeah, I thought that was going quite close to the... And red can not just clear this, it can keep control of the hoop 12 area. You want to watch out for the pig here? Shot. I was a bit concerned that the natural shot to get red down to hoop 12 was actually black through the peg. Played it so nicely. But central clearance from Rachel here and we're back to a fairly neutral position. If Rachel hits this and clears it, she's going to be enormously tempted to take the hoop on with blue next turn. Yes. And yellow, I think, will try and come between blue and the hoop to block that potential hoop stroke. Yep, and yeah, you're right, this is having to go at the hoop all day long. So you need a good shot here. Don't want to let blue have a go at this. It's short, it's open, this is a chance. Playing a golden hoop would be very worthy for this match. 
absolutely it's been uh, great watching two fine champions in action I think she's taking out yellow I like taking on the hoop here get back in the match Okay. It's not now, bad though. It's not good at all. So red is going to take short wide position from blue. Yeah, the fact that red from wide from blue is the disaster here. And black has to clear red. And I'm disappointed with that. I want it to be a foot closer. Has it held to open? Our <laughs> roving reporter is on his way to find out. Can blue hit red? That is bad if blue can see red. I think it's the three quarter pool in the reactions. Completely open. Completely open, wow. That's what? An error. So, not just that, but it means Blue's got a northwards clearance. Clearing black here? I'm actually going to play in for the block. If Blue hits red, half ball on the right, it mm. gets lovely position at 13. And Rachel knows how this game works. Oh, that's a super shot. That looks fantastic. Roving reporter is on his way again. <laughs> oh, go. That must be yeah. open given She's, what Rachel's shooting at. Has she still got the right hand side of it? Got the middle of it anyway. Hits hoop six. The hoop is open for black. So I think she'll be she'll be coming down trying to block that, won't she? No, I think she'll shoot hard. I think if she was on the north boundary, I think you're right, she might just play in again. Now that she her shot's ten yards shorter. And yellow's so good, you're right. So again, not the biggest piece of luck in the world for Rachel to rush that into hoop six, was it? It's taking a good 10 yards off the shot. Oh. <laughs> that was close. Don't want the match to end with a piece of luck like that. I want some skill involved. Um, so good clearance. Um, but very neutral this hoop still. Oh, I think Rachel's in control of this hoop. Hit in the middle of yellow here, it's quite a short shot. Yellow's just going to play back in. Yep. Is she going to hit this half ball on the left? Can't fancy hit the middle of this. And yellow just back Ooh. into position between blue and the hoop. And red is all over black. That's probably in front, but not dead straight. And not blocking blue. And certainly not threatening Rachel not having a go at the hoop. What do you feel the odds are going up to hoop 13? I reckon 65-35 or...? Well, statistically it's, yeah, 2 to 1. Okay. Um, that's what the stats show. Um, that's 2 in favour of the person playing first. Yep. Remember we've got that hill going up to that hoop as well. It goes from right to left. And it's uphill. Ooh! Well, she needs to clear this. So... Two options. Clear the short black ball. Or we'll clear the slightly longer blue ball. I think she'll take blue on. What do you reckon? I think she'll take black on.
That's a lovely shot, super shot. Red keeps control of the 12 area. So, where blue is, again, you're less likely to rush peel it with the poorly hit shot. And she's actually, I'm not sure if she's necessarily jumping this, is she? Well, no, no, she's just going to clear it on the right to right. the um, east boundary. Um, whether or not she can get enough of the wire to bounce yellow and stay near, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that looks more tricky. Yeah, it looks like she might be losing it to the south of the hoop. Yeah. really important clearance there. What have we got here? That's a perfect black. That's on hoop running position on the opposite side to red. Uh, could get that wire. Bounces yellow back off the wire. She's done well with that shot to keep yellow from going south of the hoop is useful. Yeah, if yellow goes south of the hoop and blue, blue plays wired from it, then blue and black have a huge advantage. Whereas we're again back to neutrality again. Red's going to have to clear black because yes. of its excellent position. If it doesn't clear it in the middle, black and blue will be favourite. So black coming with deep fish, I thought it might come to the other side of the hoop. Yeah, I thought, I thought blue might come the opposite side to yellow. these and you go yeah it's a small easy stroke to play but you do have to hit those in the middle oh they're difficult yeah well the hoop just starts getting away from you and they're just further enough away that the ball's not skidding so you're going to lose a little bit more control of the back ball unless you hit it a bit harder oh, well. now normally you could just stop black away and keep control of the hoop but this is stopping black to hoop 13, leaving blue in front of the hoop. So we won't see any of that now. So this will be blocking black at the hoop. That's done multiple things. That said, if blue runs the hoop, black's hampered getting 13. Right. Then red's going to get first play. I expect blue to clear yellow. Blue here. And hopefully in the middle. Yeah. Keep control of the area. You get a really good clearance, you could still end up in front of the snoop. Now, this is really dangerous. Red cannot clear black and finish north of blue. Yes. Yeah, red can't end up anywhere near north of blue because then blue can have that clearance going up to 13. So the big thing for Sohar is not letting Rachel play any sort of clearance to get the advantage there. Some players will take the hoop on here. The hoop does look interesting, but if you fail it, you've got two balls that are potentially both on the south boundary. You know, if you miss the hoop. Yep. This option is attractive because it's allowing Soha to take her own fate into her hands. Good effort. Oh, that was close. And there's that clearance towards hoop 13. Well, black's next to play, so black has a choice now. It can take improved position and hope yellow misses. Yep. Potentially allowing the flick to 13. It can take wide position from yellow. Which is interesting because yellow doesn't, well, 
I'm going to run the hoop. Yeah. I'm going to say yellow is not good enough at 13. This is an adequate position. I'll take my chances. It's a very small chance of running your hoop to somewhere awkward for red as well. <laughs> Unlikely. I guess more that's awkward for black anyway. Yeah. We're back to that question earlier about what effect will this have on players for tomorrow. I think there will be an element of fatigue tomorrow. This has been a massively mentally and physically tough match. <laughs> what are you doing here, Chris? I'm no, running, running the hoop. Um, see too many other options I like to be honest. To me the the angle of the clearance is going to move red to about the middle of the west boundary and that's going to leave a 15 yard shot back at black and I think she's playing too well to give her that. Whereas the approach from the south boundary from here could finish anywhere and yes. uh, I fancy doing that I just fancy running the hoop. Hoop it is. And that's a good second prize. That's better than taking one foot straight position. Oh, absolutely, yes. I mean, even if red gets the opportunity to clear this, if, if blue gets cleared um, by yellow, then red's not staying anywhere near the hoop, I don't think. No, I, you need to hit one of the three balls with this shot. Yes. And really, any of the three is quite good if you hit them in the middle. Black's the best. But hitting in the middle is the issue. I'm not sure hitting red in the middle is my favourite option. It's okay. It's going to get you reasonable balls at 13 probably. Yellow's going to stay on side. Yeah, it's not going to get you cleared with black going to 13. She's gone for black oh, she's and she's moved it. it. She's got it. So black's now not runnable. It's easily jawsable. I think I can jump through that. Okay. Oh, oh, that's a big angle. But I'm not confident I can run it on the ground. I think I can clear red getting in front of that hoop. So, we'll see now. If Rachel thinks black runs, we're going to see a cut the red ball get up to 13. Giving the world's biggest and off. Potentially. If she doesn't think she can run it, it's a nice stop shot clearance on the red. Yeah, maybe with a wee bit of follow to get in front of the hoop. Okay, that's fine. Now, black may be giving red a really big target. <laughs> Ewan so says, Chris, you can't jump that. Maybe we can pop, pop the balls there later and give you a mallet. He's probably right, I couldn't do anything nowadays, but I think in my, in my prime I could just fancy <laughs> flipping that one through. A little flip. Yeah, getting it, just get it spinning. Yep, make sure you miss the near wire. But I don't like allowing black any attempt to jaws it, and I'm playing with pace at this. Yes. Potentially running the hoop, potentially hitting black, Even potentially miss, doing both. If you miss, you've got the return clearance to have a crack at anyway. Yeah, there's a huge target. So, for the match. She's watching that. Oh! So, red has a straight path unblocked to 13. I think Rachel will probably be jawsing this. Yeah, you had to put that in the jaws, otherwise yellow would have something to shoot at. 
I don't think you can shoot at this with yellow cake. That's just playing to a potential clearing place to stop black just staying there whilst avoiding giving blue a flick off too far north. Blue can get north of the halfway marker with a good shot. What are you doing with red? You can have a go at this. No, I don't think I am. the halfway I'm playing red into five foot jumping range. Okay. She's taking this on. So just uh, commenting on Rachel's shot, Rachel's tried to block yellow's path to 13. by a long way, so an offside ball, yep. black will run, and we're going to go to hoop 13 of the fifth game. So I will have the advantage there, but anything can happen at hoop 13. She's going to have to play a good shot with yellow. Red goes to the west boundary offside spot and we expect this to hill right to left don't we? Yeah. So and be uphill. So three to four yard position. This looks like a fantastic it's hilling yeah. and it's going up the hill. Good shot still. It's, I think it's going to be reasonably wide. There's a lot of applause for what doesn't look like a great shot to me. They're, they're trying to lift their player as well. Yeah, Soha looks really unhappy with it. You could pop over and have a look at that first. Could you be in, please? Thank you. There you go. Rachel is standing as if it's about a 30 degree hoop. So it's not that difficult. No, and I think that's... Yeah, that's it looks 30 degrees. Yes, about 30 degree hoop. I mean, Maran well, one I'm ran sorry, that... 60 degrees. Maran one that ran that exact hoop to beat um, Pauline from here yesterday. About one and a half yards at 30 degrees. No, more than like close to 60 degrees. So. And well, that's going to extend the hoop. It's better than ending up pinned on the back of a wire, but it's not ideal. Yep. Um, So, so her asking for relief, but she can actually move it a yard anywhere from where she is because it's on the penalty marker. I think that's one of the differences between the rules of, in Egypt and, and um, outside of Egypt, elsewhere. This is short. Now, I've been going on all week about how uphill these approaches yep. are 13 and you've got to give them three and a half to four and a half yards extra pace. Um, even this is, yeah, this is okay. Um, I think yellow will clear that. Yeah, I, I just don't think you can afford to jump this. <laughs> Apparently you can. <coughs> I think you're in absolutely all sorts if this fails. I quite fancy just clearing back to the boundary clearing blue when it comes through the hoop. But again, so hard trying to take her fate into her own hands here. Well, uh, let's look at it. If this is jumpable, which she clearly is because she's going for it, yep. uh, yellow hits the hoop, bounces to the side, blue comes back through the hoop, red clears black. Unless yellow pushes blue through. Well, Okay. That's a perfectly okay result. I thought the, the risk that you might have failing this is yellow pushes blue just through and blue creams black 
uh, read over to the west boundary, then she'd have been in a lot of trouble. Was she trying to jump that then? Or was that sort of an in-off clearance? I think she was trying to jump it. Who's favourite now? I prefer to be black and blue here. Uh, fundamentally, if blue takes position, red's got a choice of clearing black or blue. Yep. If it clears black, black's got a seven yard clearance at yellow to a long boundary. Um, and yeah, okay, Rachel's going to have to run a four yard hoop. More, more than seven yards. Probably looking at eight yards here. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But yeah, someone's going to have to run a long hoop here. always the risk going for this half ball if something goes wrong. That's a good shot. Excellent shot. So, are we going hard at yellow or are we taking position? No, I think she'll take position here. What you don't want is a position where yellow can take very close position to the hoop and blue can't see it because black's in the way. So are you going to deliberately play black to somewhere to afford yourself that position? And equally, I, I'm not I'm not that keen on giving yellow a stop shot that it might be able to control and block blue's hoop. Yeah. So I think that's about right. That's about right. I think the nudge in front is my preferred option here. And then what? Blue blocking the shot at black? Blue blocking the shot at black, yeah. <laughs> Might have been over hit. I think she's over hit that. Looks like she's missed that by a mile. Maybe a wee nudge to move black into well, black and blue into red's line. Uh, or I, too risky I, to I can't. I can't turn down my hoop. This is for the match. Yeah. This is a straightforward hoop. Well, she's pulled all the clips off. Yeah, she's it's running the hoop. Off. Is it a straightforward hoop or is it a jump? <laughs> so I don't. I don't mm. understand taking all the clips off if it's just running. Yeah, off. you're right. Yeah. It could be a jump. Yeah. So, I'm less inclined to jump, but I can't see exactly what red's got and how easy blocking stuff is. Yeah. So, anyway. Now, if yellow is in front... I think yellow is in front enough to run. Do you? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Don't get in the way. Doesn't look comfortable, does she? It's a big shot. She's yeah. taking her time. We've seen lots of unlucky things happen here. Um, certainly black hitting yellow in any way whatsoever is not good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few options for black to be arrested on its way here. Yeah? 
That's good. One of those examples of where power is so important, a quarter ball contact, moving it past the lines of one and two. Is blue in play here? Mm, is blue in play here? What a good question. Jenny's on her way to try and find out. Blue's absolutely dead blocking it. And in fact, the hoop might have been in play as well. So it's back in front. Ian says yellow runs. Is Mr. Lines telling fibs? Got nothing from the commentators at home. If anyone's got any idea, you would be great to hear from you now. So, what have we got? Playing backwards, so no is the answer. It's uh, P45 for the roving reporter. Yep. And black is all over yellow now. I don't understand that choice of shot. Surely yellow should have hit black on an edge yep. and gone off the lawn. Rachel is massive favourite now. So yeah, no chance for yellow to run the hoop there. Um, it's a big tap Larry, you just you need to get yellow off the lawn there, don't you? So has she got any of blue? In which case she'll shoot at blue. If she hasn't, she should be trying to hit partner and get it off the lawn. Oh, she got blue! Beautiful clearance. Now um, she has managed to put blue in front of the hoop, giving Rachel a couple of goes if she wants them. Yeah, Rachel's going to clear yellow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not that convinced we're going to see her having to go at the hoop with blue later either, but see where things end up. Yeah, basically if she loses black here and only gets it quarter ball, we may see blue take on the hoop. Yep. If she gets it in the middle, I don't think blue will take it on. That's a lovely shot. Oh, that's a really good shot. Another good shot. There's applause from one of the Egyptians on the line there, so perhaps it's blocked blue. I don't think it has. Now I'm just going to play blue into position. And if I get good position, black can snuggle yellow. Yep. Uh, red is going to try and clear black, but even then I can clear yellow to a long boundary, yeah. I hope. So blue to three foot straight position. The hoop's unnecessary. Yeah. You're probably going to get a seven yard clearance. Don't need to take the hoop on. So black's not in front. Is he, is, we assume black's not runnable. Well, we don't know about black, do we really? <laughs> She's taking the hoop on. That's the ice cream van. 
blares in the background for the match. Outside of the wire. Oh dear. Now, does Black Rum? Is this to save the match or to potentially win the match? Yeah. We don't know from down here. I certainly can't go and have a look because there's quite, quite a distraction here. I felt it went somewhat to the side. So where is this black? It's in front. This is running. Yep. Mm, this is just running, isn't it? Yep. Rachel wins. Really enjoyed it. Great, great fifth game. Lots of good shots. Swinging one way and then the other. Um, just the sort of match this tournament deserved. And tomorrow we'll get Jamie Gumbrell against Rachel G. Australia v England in the final. And that again should be a really, really good match too. I hope Jamie can keep herself calm and comfortable in the pressure of the final. Certainly got the shots to play well in this. So that's it from us today. Um, join the CA's YouTube channel again tomorrow. I think it'll be about a 10 o'clock start again. I believe so. I'm not 100% sure though, so keep an eye out for notifications there. And uh, look forward to that for tomorrow. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Chris. Never in doubt, Will. Given, uh, Never in doubt. Not so good. Oh, thank you for joining us, everybody. What a, an amazing semi-final that was. Um, I've, I've only just come in, and uh, wow. Uh, what can you say? <laughs> well done, Rachel, and well done, Soha. What an amazing game. Uh, thank you both for such an experience. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow and, um, yeah, ready for the final. Woohoo! I'm pretty sure the final will be beginning at uh, 10 o'clock, so we'll be back then. Okay, take care, everyone. See you tomorrow.